All right, good evening, everyone, and thank you for uh, joining us. This is a Township Council uh, meeting for December 20th, 2022. This is a regular meeting with the Council of the Township of Montclair and is being broadcast live on Channel 34 and is streaming live on the Montclair TV 34 YouTube channel. It's available on demand and can and be will be rebroadcast. This meeting is called pursuant to the provisions of the Open Public Meetings Act. This meeting was included in the annual notice of the meeting schedule set forth in Resolution R21210, adopted by the Council at its conference meeting of November 15th, 2021, advertised in the official newspaper on December 30th, 2021, and January 6th, 2022, posted in the bulletin boards outside the municipal building and has remained continuously posted there. In addition, a copy of the annual notice is and has been available to the public and is on file in the office of the township clerk. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, roll call. Councilor Cummings. Present. Deputy Mayor Herlock. Present. Councilor Price Abrams. Present. Councilor Russo. Present. Councilor Schlager. Here. Councilor Jacobellis. Present. Mayor Spiller. Present. We'll move the agenda with flexibility. Uh, first, we have the uh, municipal consent hearing, which uh, Mr. Uh, Burr, would you please uh, open that up and explain to us and the public as a reminder uh, the, the process here and uh, what it entails, and then we'll go from there. Thank you. Uh, the purpose of today's public hearing for the municipal consent hearing is for the renewal of the cable franchise agreement that the township has. Oh, oh thank you. Rick, sorry. That uh, the township has with uh, um, Comcast. Our, the ordinance and the agreement is going to set to expire in April. And so the public hearing that we're having is for public comment from the, from the residents of the township to speak on uh, any in, any interest with regard to the Comcast uh, cable franchise agreement. And there we will start the the public hearing. Okay, if you uh, name and uh, of course everything, you can go Thank from there. Thank you, Mayor, members of the governing body. My name is Rob Clifton. I'm the Senior Director of Government Affairs for Comcast Cable. With me tonight is Karen Mastriano, who has just recently joined Comcast as the Director of Government Affairs. She's replacing Charles Smith, who many of you may have remembered, who uh, was our liaison to Montclair for probably over 15 years. Um, and as Mr. Burr said, tonight's public hearing on our application is for an opportunity from the governing body to uh, listen to the public about our performance over the, the life of the current and soon to be expiring uh, certificate of approval. Um, we are actually nearing the end of a three year federally mandated uh, process. Um, this began back in April 16th of 2020 when we sent what is called a 626 letter to the municipality and the 626 is from the FCC guidelines section 626 of the cable renewal process and basically the letter indicated our intent to the municipality to um, seek to renew our franchise with the town uh, in order to continue to provide cable television service um, back in June we filed an application for renewal 
um, for to the municipality uh, for your review. Um, in as the uh, administrator said, in, Mar in March of 2023, the current certificate of approval or COA will expire. Now, the certificate of approval is a document that a cable company needs in order to uh, operate a cable television system in a municipality. The Board of Public Utilities will give this agreement uh, to the cable provider once uh, municipal consent has been given by this body. Um, and they review the application as well. We have submit a petition after municipal consent is given. Upon the close of the public hearing, the town would issue an ordinance of renewal or a, a resolution of denial. If consent is granted, we would then file this petition to the Board of Public Utilities for their approval. Uh, um, the consent ordinance that we are seeking uh, is simply a right-of-way agreement. It does not obligate to let the, uh, the municipality do anything other than to continue to run our plant and have our equipment in your rights-of-way. Most importantly, it is non-exclusive, which means that any other cable provider could, be, could come before the governing body and ask to provide service as well. Um, the municipality must, uh, however, judge our application on its own merits, not compared to another provider. Under federal law and state law, the governing body must judge our application on four criteria. Has the cable operator substantially complied with the terms of the existing franchise and with the law governing cable? Has the quality of the operator service been reasonable in light of community needs? Does the operator have the financial, legal, and technical ability to provide the services and facilities that we propose to provide and we are currently providing? And is the operator's renewal proposal uh, reasonable to meet the future cable-related needs of the community? The proposal is basically that ordinance, that municipal consent ordinance. And what I will do uh, after the new year, I'm not gonna bother anybody over Christmas, but after the new year, I will send a draft municipal ordinance to the administrator for the governing body to review, make changes, make suggestions, and that sort of begins the negotiation process. There are two areas, however, that the governing body may not use when judging whether to renew or to deny. Uh, one are rates. Rates are governed by federal and state statute and are outside your purview. And the second is programming. A cable operator's channel lineup is protected under the First Amendment, just like newspaper content is. That being said, 99% of the questions we get are about rates and channel lineup, and uh, we'll try to answer those questions to the best of our ability tonight. If we can't answer something tonight, then we will follow up, obviously, with answers to that question. But as I said, and as the administrator said, this is really an opportunity for the governing body to hear from the public. So with that, you know, my comments are done. I'll answer any questions you may have going forward. Thank you. Um, I guess uh, one thing to you, you noted, uh, uh, and Mr. Burr, I'm sure you could opine on this as well, um, the process if, if the approval, what if it was not approved, by the way, what's the, what uh, occurs So at, at that point, uh, the Board of Public Utilities would ask us, both sides, to come in for mediation. Uh, if that failed, then it would go before an administrative law judge. If the municipality had a, a, a proposal that we didn't agree to and vice versa, then the judge would be the final arbiter of that. Luckily, in the 21 years I've done this, we've never gotten to that point. Uh, we've gotten the mediation once uh, in 21 years. Uh, but, you know, the, the good news is there are time constraints on this. However, as long as both sides are speaking, um, the Board of Public Utilities usually doesn't step in. They allow us to try to work through any issues. And if then at the problem there's an impasse, then they would step in. Thank you. Any questions from my colleagues? Yes, Mayor. Councilman uh, Russo. Now, Bob, I got your card here. Charles Smith started out in the council with me. I saw that young guy ago. over there in that picture. <laughs> There's six pictures of me, but he's in two of them. Um, and Charles has been a very good, he, 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 what, did he retire? And did he retire? Yes, he retired in April. Okay. As long as you didn't fire him or anything. Absolutely not. Actually, we were at a retirement party the other night for another colleague, and he was there. Now, I know programming is not your area, but my wife was so upset the other night because we all got Comcast service. She couldn't get the 
10 o'clock news on Channel 11 for a few nights. And she said to me, what are you going to do about it? So we're going to have a hearing on this. So what happens when that happens? Why is there such problems? Maybe a, a carrier doesn't, you know. So there is a negotiation ongoing now. It's still ongoing um, to try to resolve that issue. Uh, we have this, that company, uh, we have those sort of local news programs all over our footprint throughout the United States that we're having issues with. Mm -hmm. So we're in negotiations with them. And hopefully, you know, as a Comcast subscriber myself, we'll get that back on hopefully okay. relatively soon. But Christine, yeah, it's you a, heard that, right? My wife heard that. It's PIX 11 News at 10. Yes. So we're, yeah, we're in negotiations with them. The largest part of the, the bill that our customers pay is programming costs. So we try to weigh those costs as opposed to, you know, rate increases and things like that. So, um, but that is an ongoing negotiation as we speak to try to get that back. That one, one last point. Uh, we started cable TV in 92 when I became a councilman the first time 30 years ago. And we had, I think it was cable vision then. We didn't have Comcast then. Whatever we had, we had problems with the sound that we could project when cable, when our, our 34 channel and others would, and we still seem to have some problems. With the local access channel. Yeah, but we've worked things out pretty well, but people have always over the years complained. Now, if there's anything you can do to just check that out, because we want people to feel comfortable. They don't have to put their sound up real high just to get, right. you know, our local access channel. But that's always been a problem for 30 years that we started out with another, another company. I think Comcast done a great job, especially with Charles Smith there. But if you could just... Keep that in mind. It's a, a question of the uh, sound and uh, I will talk people to our feeling comfortable. They don't have to. Mostly older people come right. to me and say, we can't, can't hear. We can't hear you, they say sometimes. I will talk to our head-end operator tomorrow and see if they can start to look at that. And then that. work with our, our staff here, Rick. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, thank you. That's all I have, Bob. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, I'll just simply say, as we will obviously through our attorney get the proposal and uh, go through that process of going back and forth, um, you know, staying away from the, the rates or uh, other pieces, although we all note that's a key piece. Um, but, you know, as it does relate in this sense, you know, making sure from an equity standpoint and access standpoint, uh, and we all see it now as uh, whether we want to, you know, treat it as, uh, um, as, as, as really, you know, uh, another item like energy and uh, other pieces, you know, we do have to be mindful of in today's day and age, whether it's education or otherwise, you know, access is so important. Um, and what that looks like in your proposals to make sure that it is something that's available. We know you have a number of programs that, that, that are in that space now. Um, so we'll make sure those fit the needs of our residents and, uh, you know, engage and, in that work. And one of the big areas you talk about now, this franchise is only for cable television. It doesn't govern internet. However, obviously over the last two years, internet has become a huge issue. So the federal government has the ACP program, uh, which people can use to help pay for their internet service as well as their, their cell phone service. And about 10 years ago, we began what is called Internet Essentials. It first started out that any child on the free and reduced school lunch program, high-speed internet from Comcast at $9.95 a month, as long as they remained in the program at home. Um, and over the years, uh, we've actually expanded that program to include people that are just about in every type of government's um, uh, uh, subsidy program, such as SNAP or TANF, uh, veterans qualify uh, certain veterans groups. So there is a laundry list because Internet has become the most important thing uh, for many people. And we do have a, a program, as I said, Internet Essentials, which provides high-speed Internet at a low cost if you belong to or, or a, in a group that uh, qualifies for that. So that's been a that's been a big program that we've had over the last decade. Yep, and we appreciate Question that, about and, and we'll see. And uh, I'll note to the the cable piece, though. It, you know, yeah, a absolutely. number of shows uh, actually put educational content on, specifically yes. teaching classes during the pandemic or height of the pandemic. So there's a space there too that we yes. want to be mindful of. But uh, appreciate your answer on that, absolutely. Councilman Cummings. Yeah, question, Internet Essentials. Is there a hookup cost for that? No. So they can get it for free. There's no. It's well, it's nine dollars and ninety five cents. Right, but the if they don't have Comcast, no, they could. We we. It's all part of that program to, to set them up with this with the uh, internet. So if they don't have Comcast and they want it, they get it for free. Right. Setting it up, hooking it up, everything. Yes. No installation fee. No. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you very much, and Thank I'll you, say any questions on this from the public. Great.
please come on up and sign in if you don't mind. And uh, questions about or comments about Comcast. Um, as as right, internet just name and uh, oh, Kenneth Berman, uh, been a resident uh, here in Montclair for a little under a year. So, as internet usage gets more prevalent, uh, consumers at home use use the internet for uh, you know for work. The upstream downstream uh, piece becomes more becomes more important. What's Comcast doing in Montclair to update the existing plant for? future technologies, uh, the future iterations of DOCSIS? So what we do is um, we upgrade and maintain basically every year we're out in the field. So we have uh, basically a command center that can see our nodes, and nodes are uh, it's a piece of equipment that feeds several hundred homes in the area. So we can watch when they drop off, they drop on, and then we immediately dispatch. But for a complete rebuild, at this point we're we're not anything near that. Uh, we are still able to provide the highest speeds even through coax from the pole and pedestal to, into the home at this point. So um, at this point, um, uh, we are, it's a constant maintenance of the system. There's no complete rebuild that's needed. Thank you. And a little bit of a spill over there into uh, a, a little bit of another area, but, uh, you know, the concept of net neutrality and, and making sure that people have access and uh, as we're watching and we all view things in a different way now, um, you know, if we are moving towards treating it more like a utility, you know, just being mindful of that. But uh, appreciate it. We will look forward Absolutely. to and you'll hear from us as we hear from you. Absolutely. Great. Thank you. Have a happy holidays. Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Okay, uh, moving on. Next, I'm going to move. They've been presented to us, the Council of the Minutes of November 1st, 2022. Uh, and I so move. Second. It's moved and seconded. Are there any corrections, additions, modifications? Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, next, I'm going to open up to public comment. All speakers, uh, please, reminded, please complete the sign-in sheet next to the podium before addressing the Council. Please limit your comments to three minutes. Uh, if you wish to, and it's up on the clock that you can see there. If you wish to comment on a pending ordinance that's listed, uh, that there will be a time for public comment on that ordinance as part of the hearing for that ordinance. With that, I'll open it to public comment. Please just remember to sign in and then state your name and address and uh, offer your comments. <laughs> Adriano Tool 48 South Willow. I attended the planning board meeting last night. I don't know if you watched any of it, but they are really uh, tasked with a lot of uh, issues. And uh, eventually I think the town council will be making decisions on this. And I really want to alert you to the fact that time really goes quickly. I served on the planning board and the board of adjustment I don't know, 20 or 30 years ago. When I drive by some of the decisions that I made, I remember them. So this will happen to you with whatever the decision made, uh, if you're still living here and if you're still here. But uh, please remember that because the plans yesterday were very well presented and they're huge, six-story buildings. Uh, it was interesting that it was pointed out that if you looked at it as a four-story building, it didn't look as bad if you were a few blocks away and some um, setbacks would alleviate the enormity of the building. They're big buildings, they're close together. Um, when you come on Bloomfield Avenue, now you see the railroad station and um, anyway. There's also, I see you have at the last item is a traffic study, which is great. But I remember hearing about traffic studies that are done at five o'clock in the morning or when there's nobody. I mean, please make sure that these are people that know people on the streets all the time. Um, And I'm also wondering about the water facilities in this town. There was a third water main break again. How much more people do laundry and wash dishes and take showers? Uh, there must be places you can get some assistance in getting our water systems improved. That's a problem. I don't know how we can add a thousand new people. Maybe you'll get another liquor license you can sell, but um, that's really not the whole aim of it all, I don't think. Um, the question of the supermarket and what the supermarket needed. 
it seems to me in the past, we've had these figures before, the 20,000 square feet, 40,000. I think that information isn't available someplace. Um, and I don't know if we have to design space for them or all you need is a space. That's the important part of this whole project is to provide this service that the community at this end of town needs. Also, Montclair really has beautiful architecture. The churches have Tiffany windows. The, the bank buildings, they're no longer banks, but that's another story. Uh, but the architecture includes um, arts and crafts, Victorian, um, you name it, Tudors. The Upper Montclair area is really charming with their Tudor facades. Uh, maybe their facades, but it seems to me when you look at some of the buildings, there's no thought to any aesthetics. And I know we can't require that, but maybe there's some incentive. If they pick a pretty building, you'll get an award, maybe. I don't know. But I think you have to be creative in your decisions and look at what exists because, uh, as I said, 20 or 30 years from now, when you drive around, you'll see them and they'll remember you. Thank you. Thank you. You can come on up and fill out after. Yep, thanks. Just name and address and you can fill in after. My name is Lauren Berman and I'm here to oppose the ratification resolution regarding the O'Toole Scrivo Law Firm's contract to investigate the 2021 Montclair Farm Firefighters promotional exam. Myself and others have submitted OPA requests which have illegally gone unanswered for two months now regarding the selection process of the O'Toole Law Firm. Tonight you'll decide if we pay for these findings which are being withheld from the public. So what do we know about the selection of the O'Toole Law Firm? Well, we know that the Montclair CFO Rao alleged in her lawsuit that she was being pressured to sign off on the payments but refused to do so because the proper lawful bidding process was not followed. We know that Kevin O'Toole, Chief Herman, and Tim Stafford are all prominent members of the Cedar Grove community and that O'Toole and Herman are involved in the same Irish American and political fraternal organizations and that Chief Herman works frequently with the Cedar Grove Volunteer Fire Department of which Kevin O'Toole is a member. We know the law firm was not selected through a fair and open bidding process. We know that state law required a, re a council resolution to hire the firm for a billing threshold anticipated to be as high as this one. And we know that tonight's resolution does not contain a certification of funds, which other resolutions for payment do. Are we to believe that a vindication of Herman that comes from a firm whose ties all but guarantee that result? In addition to the selection process being kept secret, the report of Bruce Morgan, Montclair's affirmative action officer, has likewise illegally been withhold from, withheld from OPRA requests. But don't worry, I have it. Reading from the report prepared by Morgan, quote, of the six African-American firefighters that moved on to the next phase of scoring, having passed the written portion, it appears that if the criteria for scoring had remained the same, as the promotional exam taken in 2010, the six African-American fighter fighters would have accumulated higher scores than they ultimately did. That assessment is based on the fact that many of their scores would have been substantially higher based on their individual levels of seniority. One of those firefighters in particular would have had the highest score in the category of the promotional exam he took, end quote. Does anyone actually believe that holding an irrelevant master's degree should hold more weight than experience and tenure as a firefighter in a firefighter's promotional exam? Does anyone care about Bruce Morgan's other findings, that the time card scandal was mishandled? Do you think Montclair residents want to pay for fraudulently entered time? Is Montclair the type of place where federal law prohibiting employment discrimination has to be enforced through legal action? I hope you'll vote against this resolution. Good evening, everyone. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be up here because I heard you say if it has something to do with an ordinance wait, but then I heard Ms. O'Toole talking about the Lackawanna. So should I wait until you get to number C? Because I did receive what you said, but I wasn't sure because I heard. Uh, Councilwoman, I appreciate that. And uh, we, we do have uh, 
Um, we do have an ordinance, but you could speak to it now. That's an introduction. It doesn't matter. I can that's wait. I just no. wasn't sure. Because speak to I it now because that's okay. going to be reintroduced. And it's short. So it'll be a, that'll be a first hearing. So the okay. public comment on that will be the second one anyway. So please go All ahead. All right. Thank you. And mm -hmm. um, I apologize. I did ask. And good evening, everybody. And happy Hanukkah, happy holidays, whatever you may celebrate. Enjoy in your heart. Um, I'm here this evening because when I was last before you, I expressed some concerns that I had about the Lackawanna um, redevelopment plan. And it wasn't that I'm like vehemently opposed to it. I just expressed the concerns that I had for infrastructure and for quality of life. And so I'm here again today because as you um, think about that, I, I really do want to be more specific tonight about the infrastructure issues that I'm most concerned about. I'm extremely concerned about the uh, floodplains, water runoff. I'm very, very concerned about sinkholes and the fact that some of you sitting up here, um, when we shared the podium a few years ago, we witnessed that the street on Glen Ridge Avenue sunk. So we know that there's something going on with the infrastructure there that may not be quite right. There have also been several sinkholes in the area. And so I have not seen enough in writing to demonstrate to me that we've taken enough time to study those types of infrastructure things that would make me certainly feel more comfortable that when we erect this um, incredible uh, development that we're not going to have, you know, some of it start to sink before us. And one of the main causes for triggering sinkholes is to have, you know, heavy density construction in an area very rapidly, especially an area that's over a waterway. And we all know that the, the um, river uh, runs, runs under the um, area over there as well. And so that's one main concern I have. The other is as we look at the traffic studies, please extend them to Chestnut because of the train track that we have there. We know that the traffic gets backed up there for miles and during the rough rush hours. If there's a train that's coming down, you're sitting up to Chestnut and back. So I don't feel that it's sufficient just to stop, you know, with the immediate streets and say we're doing that. And I also would like to, for it to be an independent study. Um, and the third question that I have that um, I don't feel will be answered tonight, but I want to put it out there is, I'm not sure that I ever received who's going to be subsidizing the workforce housing portion of the um, affordable housing component or whatever with the workforce housing since if I received correctly there's not going to be any federal funding here. Does that mean that Mr. Plasek is going to be subsidizing the workforce housing or the township or have we worked that out? Um, but otherwise that's it. Wish you guys well and um, I'm just really pleased with the um, job that our planning uh, board is doing, you know, while they're thinking they're very thoughtful and um, for those of you that had anything to do with um, appointing the um, planning board, I would like to thank you. They were very thoughtful. I attended their meeting and they seem to have some of the same concerns that many of us in the community have. So I hope when it comes back to you, you'll give them the respect to listen. Thank you and God bless you guys. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Martin Schwartz, Montclair. At what point are we going to follow process? Because the process for developing a redevelopment plan required interacting with, taking input, and listening to multiple boards in the early drafting of that plan. And that's not what was done here. You spent a year and a half working behind the scenes with one developer effectively putting forth the plan that he wanted and then you went along with and then tried to steamroller it through to the community. Only now, in the last week or so, are you actually hearing the feedback and pushback from the community. The whole process is wrong and you've put the planning board in a position of having to now vet all the details that would have been vetted beforehand that are now going to come back to you with multiple areas, as Councillor Schlager knows, saying that this is not consistent with the master plan. So in a sense, you have wasted a year and a half trying to draft this plan yourself. Had you input, gotten input from the community, the boards during that period of time and written a neutral plan, not with the developer telling you what they wanted, but with you determining what the community wanted, we wouldn't be in this situation. So now you're going to hear all the inconsistencies and all the things that the plan does that are not 
what the community wants and exists within the master plan, and then you're going to have to make a decision. Are you just going to violate the master plan and do what Mr. Plasic wants, who is well-intentioned and has done a very nice site plan, but the buildings are too big, it's too much bulk, not enough open space, you're all hearing the various pushbacks, there's nothing new, they will come to you and you will be placed in a position of now having to rule on that and likely go against the community interests. Hi, I'm Carmel Lockman, and I am not going to talk about Lackawanna Plaza. <laughs> so, my concern is in your consent agenda on uh, resolution R22270, which is the resolution designating official newspapers. We have a great local newspaper here, the Montclair Local. It has um, survived now for five years in uh, being basically funded, as you probably know, by one individual. And now it's become a nonprofit and it's being funded by its members and donations or whatever. My concern is, we, I love local news. Um, it's, I'm a local news junkie. And I feel like um, local newspapers, they bring the community together. They highlight the good things going on in the community. They give our children a platform to be proud of themselves as we are proud of them. But I wonder why we don't designate Montclair Local as our newspaper for legal notices. They need money. Legal notices will bring you know, revenue. And I went and I looked at the ordinance, that, which is NJSA, um, excuse me, 351-2-2. And when I read this, I, I can't understand why uh, Montclair Local is not designated as our local, uh, you know, as our newspaper. It says that um, the qualifications required by law are that the newspaper be entirely printed in English. It shall be printed and published within the state of New Jersey. Um, it has to be in publication for not less than two years. And um, it has to be uh, uh, under second class mail. And I believe second class mail specifically applies to newspapers and magazines. So I'm not understanding. Did you have this discussion? No. Okay, well, I. You did. Oh, okay, so what's going on? We'll, we'll answer all the questions at the end. Oh, yeah. sorry. Okay, well, that's, I wish, I hope, and I would encourage you if you could, but maybe you can't mm -hmm. for some reason that I'd like to know, you know, why that we can't have the Montclair Local as our designated newspaper, because we do so much legal advertising. It would really boost their revenues, which is much needed. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, if I could, uh, Carmel, I've asked this question many times. One time I was threatened by a reporter from another paper for wanting to take money out of his pocket because I simply suggested that this new newspaper might be a good one in addition to the other newspaper. But I was told, and somebody will correct me, we have to have the Star-Ledger daily. We have to have a daily paper because we might have to put a notice in, you know, right away. I understood that. But I said, well, then, which of the local papers is more read? Well, a more established paper, I was told, is the Montclair Times for 150 years. So there were questions I had raised which were never really completely answered, and then I backed off. But I did suggest this and brought this question up twice in the last several years. So maybe somebody can clarify for me, too, because to me it seems logical we could use both. If we have to do two papers, use the two locals. But I was told we have to have a daily. Any other public comment? Okay, seeing none, I will close the uh, – oh, okay. Mm -hmm. We should tell her. Hello, good evening. I'll wait to get to the mic.
I was just told another answer to that question, Carmel. Somebody just told me. I don't know why anybody doesn't just tell you. I mean, you are we going to tell her at some point? You just said answer more. Oh. Answer all her questions at the end or answer everybody's questions at the end? Yeah. Okay. Uh, go ahead. Hello. Hello. Oh, on Tuesday, December 20th, uh, my name is Ahava Felicidad, president of the Tenants Organization of Montclair here because we always have to be present in some way um, those who are here physically and those of us who are watching online those who are watching online later or listening i uh, just want to make sure that i tell everyone tonight uh, to have happy holidays merry christmas a happy new year and to remember to reach out to the tenants organization of montclair at tenants organization montclair at gmail.com 973-936-8848 uh, to join us and have access to our virtual meetings as well as join us as a volunteer and become a member of the NJTO which is the New Jersey Tenants Organization. We are still um, recruiting volunteers to help with distribution for um, all of our buildings in town, our multifamily homes, also our homeowners. So everyone is still being actively engaged. You'll see a lot more from us in the new year, 2023. Thank you very much for all that you've done for us. Um, it's been a very monumental year, considering everything that we've all, you know, don't want to go there. But it's been a monumental year overall, and a monumental historic thing took place, a big thing, substantial the fact that Montclair, New Jersey now has rent control and there's still people who are learning that for the first time. So um, thanks to everyone who's waking up and waking up their neighbors, family and friends about that and bringing us all their questions, concerns, and then we would direct you to the appropriate resources when things are beyond our scope. Thank you, have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is David Greenbaum. Um, born and raised in Montclair, New Jersey. Formerly a commissioner on the Historic Preservation Commission. Um, architecturally trained. Uh, formerly both in the United States and in Europe. Studied urban design and urban planning. Uh, watched this town grow and evolve. Care deeply for the town. Um, I offered to be and volunteered to be a commissioner on the HPC because I care deeply about this town. I'm very appreciative of the kind of time you put into your work for the town because I know how much I put in as a commissioner and I realize by tremendous m margins you guys are putting in significantly more. So I realize your plate is very full. So I want to say a few things. One is one is that the project for Lackawanna is the most important piece of urban planning probably in the entire history of the town of Montclair. Number two, the developer has put together a very ambitious plan. There are aspects of it that have some merit, great merit. There are some aspects of it that have less than great merit. I can't expect each and every one of you to have the literacy and the knowledge and the, the time and the fluency to really help guide this project to the best it could possibly be. It would be an unrealistic expectation. But what I can say to you is you have a brain trust of people around you who are here, who are dedicated and available to you, who want to help you. These people are not necessarily here to obstruct, they're here to assist. And I'd like to volunteer myself as one of those people. If I can be available to each and every one of you individually, I would like to be there. I do not want to be seen as somebody who's an obstructionist. I want to be somebody here to help us achieve the best possible outcome for Montclair, because the stakes are very high. And I want all of us to look back and reflect and say, we did a great job, because we deserve it. The type of people who choose to live in this town, the type of people who choose to serve in this, in this town, we deserve to get the best possible outcome. Thank you. Hi, my name is Mary Birmingham. I don't have a lot to say tonight, but um, 
I just want to make sure our questions are answered about our OPRA requests. Um, none of them are being answered. Their deadlines are coming and going. Um, there's, there's, it's the law for a reason. It's a law, the law for a very good reason. We deserve answers. So I just want to make sure that question is addressed. Thank you. I would like to add my support to the sure. Montclair locals uh, covering the, this town. What, one issue a while ago, the Montclair local had about 46 pages, and the Montclair Times, which is a very old and respected newspaper, had about six. And many of the reports are not even local, so that should be also taken into consideration. And I see that on the Montclair website, you're asking for people to volunteer for committees and volunteer work. I think the one that was recently presented also might be tapped. There are people in this town with all sorts of incredible abilities, and uh, you don't have to do it all yourselves. And as I said, 20, 30 years, you're going to be driving by looking at these things, and you are responsible for them. So thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, with that, I will uh, close our public comments. Um, you know, first, just to, to address some of the pieces, you know, specific one of the conversa conversations and comments was around um, our uh, water infrastructure. Big kudos um, certainly to Gary Zarni and the water utility. Uh, we are way ahead of every surrounding town in terms of the infrastructure work and the dollars that we've been put in, both putting in new piping and also lining existing piping. That's for both our water lines and sewer lines and, and, and much more. Um, it is absolutely a testament to the investment in the millions of dollars that we've been able to put in uh, with the dollars saved from our debt debt, uh, debt servicing. Um, you know, that, that's been a priority of his well before any other town and anyone else. And uh, it does not mean, though, uh, that we are caught up on the 100-year-old uh, pipes that are all throughout, in, in especially this area's infrastructure. Um, we've got part of the oldest uh, parts of the state up here, north, north, northern section. Um, and also we know that even when our pipes are not failing, uh, there are, we are affected by surrounding towns' uh, work or, not, or, or lack thereof in their pipes. So that work continues. Uh, it's an investment area that doesn't always get a ton of attention, but we, we remain committed to putting the dollars there for sure. Uh, specific to uh, OPA requests, I, I know that the challenges around it, uh, you know, exist, and I'll ask the clerk to, to explain some of that, and maybe the attorney to comment as well as to status of this, where it's at, and, and what this, what's, uh, what's going on. So, Madam Clerk, I'll turn it to you first. I know that's where the, the stuff originates. Thank you, Mayor Spiller. Um, the OPA law requires a response within seven business days, which my office does meet. The OPRA law also allows us to seek extensions depending on the volume of the request. And right now we're, ex we're also experiencing staff shortages, so that adds to the reason why we seek these extensions, which to my understanding are permissible. I know that there's been some questions about OPRAs where they're asking for documents where I inquired with IT and it's yielding 8,000 pieces of paper, which we then need to send to the law department for review. So when you say 8,000, are they printed and then sent yes, through? Yes, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the... And, and then they're sent, Mr. Burke, can you speak to these documents come to you guys, uh, purpose and process, et cetera? Yes, whenever the... Whenever the um, clerk's office uh, requests an, a legal opinion or whether a document is disclosable or not under the OPRA law, we review that. Sometimes it's, multi, it's hundreds of documents. I, I did the library uh, OPRA request, and I believe I went through about 2,000 uh, emails to make sure there was no um, information that wasn't disclosable, like personal identifiers, social security numbers, uh, driver's license, that type of information. So it's, it's cumbersome and it's time and it takes time. Um, so I'm hearing the reason why, okay, and uh, you would advise, of course, to the clerk if anything was impermissible in terms of law oh. extensions, et cetera. Absolutely. Uh, Madam Clerk, you alluded to staffing pieces. I know we had specifically brought up your staffing question here. Have we posted, Mr. Gambit, I guess this to you, have we posted the position at this time? Is there a reason? And if you could turn your microphone. The position has not been posted. We had that conversation, uh, I guess, a couple of meetings ago. 
And subsequent to that, I uh, know Councillor Russo voiced a concern about adding another administrative uh, position to that, you know, to the clerk's office. So I need to get a clear direction from the governing body as to whether we want that position. It's, it's not another position. We've had the position well, in there. The, it's a change of title. And mm -hmm. the concern was that I received from the uh, CFO is the difference is a $15,000 difference in the change of title. So if I can get a, a clear direction as to the position of the governing body, whether they want that title change, then I can go forward and post that job. But so I looked at it and I saw the, because we did have the emails back and forth on this, I saw the clerk responded. I asked if there was a response to that. There wasn't one. So the last email that we saw was that the position was being paid at this salary. Is that correct? Yes, sir, that's correct. And it was budgeted for that for the year because the individual's in there until they left. That's correct. So it's budgeted for it. We've got it. And we're hearing about people asking about Oprah. We've been hearing about it. We're the ones that hear about this. Uh, to provide clear direction, I would so move that we post that position and fill the position. So that's my motion. As an administrative assistant. As it is paid in what it was and what's the title? I believe um, the person there before was a principal clerk. You want to be promoted to administrative assistant at that salary, at that yes, salary sir. level. So fifteen thousand dollars is yes, sir. is appropriated. And okay. if you have because your microphone on, just so we can hear it, if you're on, if you we, weren't on, we okay. can't hear these things. Yeah. Thank My you. answer to Mr. Scannerberry's question was yes. Thank you. The salary was set for the entire year of 2022. Was the employee was temporarily promoted to the title that Mr. Scannerberry just said, which is administrative assistant. So Which for that, only in that I know it did bring this up, I think it was actually a month and a half ago or something, and we're hearing about the challenges of Oprah, and we hear about it now in meetings like mm -hmm. this where it's been delayed when we've asked for this two months ago, three months ago, so it's a little frustrating when we've asked for it. Uh, I'm going to move that we post and fill the administrative position for the clerks I so move. I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded. Any additional questions, concerns, comments? Yes, Mayor. Yep, here's Councilman the, Here's Rousseau. the question I raised. No department that I know of has more than one administrative assistant in our government, most governments. So the question was, if there is already an administrative assistant position in the clerk's office, why are we having a second administrative assistant position created? I know the money's there. Unfortunately, the young lady left who was a very good employee. <coughs> but my question was, why that title? I know you need additional staff. But the principal clerk position would have been of help. Why does it have to be an administrative? I think Brian's asked that question because I asked that I raised it. It's a legitimate personnel issue, but I know I'm not supposed to get involved in that. However, it is a legitimate question. Why the title of administrative assistant? Madam Clerk, would you care to apply? The duties of the administrative assistant, Councilor Russo, are more expansive comparable to a principal clerk, and that's what the office needs to better serve the residents of Montclair. Right, but you already have an administrative assistant. I have one administrative assistant, and I had a second administrative assistant through November 1. Right, in a temporary title. Yes, doing those duties. I'm not going to argue with you here. I'm not supposed to talk to you about this at all. That's not true. No, That's I can't we're talk. We are having the discussion. I'll now, get so. reprimanded later. Yeah. Right. So, uh, any other questions, concerns, or comments on the motion? Yeah, just, just a quick question. So, uh, Councilman Cummings, and then and then Councilman Yacobels. The previous employee who left, how long was she in that role, in that at that level? Because you said she had a temporary promotion. Councilor Cummings, I don't know the exact date, but it was for well over a year. Okay, but she worked there for eight years. I can't confirm oh, that. I, I know she worked for eight years. She was one of my students. I um, think we've got Councilman Yacobels next, and then we'll come back if you've got another comment. Councilman Yacobels. Thanks, Mayor. Um, so just hearing the process, I'm just wondering out loud, uh, Mr. Burr, for the law department, I, I don't, there are third parties, and I don't know if we're allowed to do this, but there are third parties who you can hire, and if you want to ask us for additional resources to consider. For 2023, I'd almost rather your time not be spent going through all of those documents looking for personal information. There are third parties that do this. Um, you pay them by the hour to go through and screen. Um, so I'd recommend looking at third parties to bring on to support some of this work so that your time could be focused on the policy making with us. 
Um, and same thing for the clerk's office, if there's any additional support that you need to just make sure you reach out to us and let us know. Because I want to make sure, and I'm sure my colleagues join me in this, want to make sure that we're, we are getting the public what they're asking for when they're asking for it in accordance with the law. And I understand that you can request extensions, but I don't think the extensions um, are in the spirit of the law. I think the whole point is that people can get the information they're looking for to inform their perspective, to ask us questions, particularly before we're taking action on things. So I would just ask both of your departments to please let us know if you need resources to make sure that we're meeting those expectations. Thanks. Okay. And now we have, uh, we have a motion, and the motion is to uh, post and fill this position. Madam Clerk, call the roll. Can I? I just want to. Fill Respond position, to but could you Bob, tell um, us what, Bob. What the wording is, Phil, what position, what title? So I have a. Before we go down the route of bringing in a third party, because that is going through those Oprah's are very. Well, Councilman Cummings, I'm going to ask to see if it's germane to the motion because the motion is not for, to bring for, in a third okay, party. Yeah. So, but right. if you want to come back to that, yeah, that's will. a separate okay. conversation that was yeah. noted. Um, but germane to the motion, which is to, to fill the position in an administrative assistant, which is what the title is. Uh, we have a motion. Uh, it's been duly seconded. Madam Clerk. Councilor Cummings? No. Deputy Mayor Herlock? Yes. Councilor Price Abrams? Yes. Councilor Russo? No. Councilor Schlager? Yes. Councilor Iacobelis? Yes. Mayor Spiller? Yes. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and I, I concur with uh, you know, Councilman Iacobelis in terms of making sure we are you know, being as responsive as possible. Um, certainly, we understand the challenges. Even you know, even with more people in there, eight thousand emails. You know, that what numbers you're talking about are extensive. And of course, going over there, Mr. Uh, Burr, I would say to the councilman's point, if there are ways we could bring in some type of assistance there also, because I fully understand if you're trying to read eight thousand emails. I mean, that's I get it, right? But but we do also want to try and be responsive. But I also get that that's nef not nefarious if you're trying to read eight thousand emails. So uh, the suggestion, and, and Councilman Cummings, did you have something to opine on that on that piece as a comment? Yeah, I have a history with Oprah's in this town, and so I will tell you, it's a very extensive process, and the cost can be quite a lot. So if you can get provide us with um, some numbers and whether or not you feel as though it's um, that you're personally and your staff is overwhelmed, then make that case. Thank you, Councilor Cummings. And, and we'll start putting some stuff together and recommendations on how we can help the clerk's office task with those tasks. I, I know she gets a volume, large volume of Oprah requests constantly, it's, you know. So uh, we do our best to respond and we respond according to the law. Not every document that is requested by the public, and this is, might be unfortunate, is uh, not disclosable under Oprah. There are certain reasons uh, that a document may be subject to uh, confidentiality, you know, re relating to an employee or relating to a position or something like that. So, uh, but we try our best to, to respond, and I know the clerk's office does a tremendous job doing that. Okay, thank you very much. Um, also, the question of workforce uh, housing, uh, the workforce housing conversation uh, is specifically, you know, to see how the developer would uh, would. Uh, uh, pay for that. So that was a question um, that someone asked. So that that's uh, specific to that, and, and of course, certainly important. Um, official newspaper, uh, Mr. Burr, or Madam Clerk. I guess I'll go back to you guys if you want to answer that again. I know Councilman Russo has been at the forefront asking that question repeatedly. Uh, but would you like to answer that again, uh, Mayor? I believe one of the reasons why we don't uh, use the Montclair Local is because of its not-for-profit status. Uh, statutorily, I believe there's an issue with it. I could give more clarity to that at our next meeting so that the public will be understand what why that is but I believe that's the uh, main reason great and uh, you can let us know about the print status how often it is or isn't printed if that's a factor but madam clerk I know you've also uh, looked into this and answered you have for anything further to add please can I, can, I, can I get a little more clarification for the public two women who ask questions about this and myself because it's a nonprofit, why should that matter? Uh, Councilman Russo, as I stated, I don't have the full uh, body right. of the law present today. I said I could bring the law later and, and update you and the public. Right, but we're supposed to vote on that tonight. Can we maybe defer voting on that tonight then? Let's see. Madam, Madam let's Clerk, listen let's to hear the, what to the clerk. clerk's office because she's usually in charge of uh, making 
presenting that information to the council. If the governing body doesn't take action on designating an official newspaper, I won't be able to publish the notices after this meeting because the current resolution expires on the 31st of December. And do you have uh, opinions on which papers can be selected and why? The only information I have is the state statute. I think it's Title 40. It's in my memo to you all. Mm -hmm. There's a list of the requirements in order for a newspaper to fit uh, to be designated as an official newspaper. And I believe the nonprofit status was the issue. Okay. Uh, Mr. Burr, if you can come back with uh, a piece at the end of uh, your review on that, the list that she's noting, the law, and give us an opinion on that. I imagine, uh, Madam Clerk, we designate, which obviously we need to have a designation. Uh, designations can be changed, I assume? Yes, sir. Right. So we should designate, and then if there's a reason to or ability to, we can change. Okay. That's what I need to know. Okay. Thank you very much on that front. Um, the uh, last piece this, that I heard also the uh, O'Toole Law Firm, uh, specific to that review and making sure uh, that the manager was not involved in that. Uh, the process was to ask every council member, any uh, uh, law firm that wanted to be considered. Um, names were put forward. Uh, everybody looked at those firms, ranked them, and randomly selected from the ranking order once that was uh, uh, determined by everyone's, uh, I shouldn't say randomly, once the ranking order was determined, um, it was put forward. Uh, Mr. Burr, is it under the threshold legally to be paid, and was the process followed legally? Yes, it's current. It's under the uh, threshold of uh, current threshold is forty bid threshold is forty four thousand, so it's under the the bid threshold, uh, and there was nothing illegal about the contract itself. Okay, and I'm sure we will see also one similarly, and I'm sure you may have an update for us on the other investigations with the other firm that we're using. Um, I forget the name, but you, you've noted it here before, uh, and it will be a similar process, I assume, where we uh, will receive the bill after that and, and pay it as well if it's under the threshold, and, correct? And, right, and, and similar other investigations, uh, Mayor, there's been multiple investigations done over the course of the years, and okay. uh, the same processes uh, have been filed and those bills have gotten paid. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, next is pending ordinance or second reading, which is ordinance 02226, which is an ordinance to amend chapter 82, animals, article one, dogs, and to add article uh, eight, sale of animals uh, to the code of the township of Montclair. I so move. Second. It's so moved and seconded. I'm gonna open to the public hearing without objection. Is there any objection from my colleagues to opening to the public uh, hearing on this ordinance? <laughs> Anyone wishing to speak? <laughs> I know you've spoken on it a few times, so okay, on that one, I'm not hearing it. So without objection, I'm going to close the hearing. Is there objection? Seeing no objection, any comments from my colleagues? Uh, Councilwoman Price Abrams. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I, if, if you could just clarify for me, because maybe I read it quickly, what is the part that we need to amend? And I just appreciate just the re-up re on what it is that we need to amend, having just, I thought, passed this. We didn't pass it. This is the second reading. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not I, sure. I apologize. You're... I, I oh, okay. guess I just okay. lost track. I thought it had been on and had been off, and I That's think right. it's been before us twice, but it wasn't voted yeah, on twice. A, so yep. I'm all good exactly. now. Exactly. Yep. Long view. That's good. No, that's one of the easier ones to answer. So it's oh, yeah. good. Yeah, it works. <laughs> Any other comments from my colleagues? Uh, Council, Councilman Yakubels. I made comments at the last meeting, so uh, go to those for comprehensive comments. But I just, again, want to thank the advocates in the room for advocating for this. And just want to note that it was only a few days ago that New York State uh, passed a full statewide ban similar to this. So we're not doing something that's extraordinary here, although it's extraordinary for New Jersey. Uh, we were going to beat New York, but now, you know, unfortunately, <laughs> we took our time to get it right, which is a good thing. Um, but again, this is something that I hope you, you all and anybody uh, watching interested in this will Xerox and send to our state legislators and get them to pass this at the state level. So thank you. All right. Great. Seeing no, yeah, no don't clap yet. We got to vote. I see you. Uh, Madam Clerk, please. Councilor Cummings? Yes. Deputy Mayor Herlock? Yes. Councilor Price Abrams? Yes. Councilor Russo? Yes. Councilor Schlager? Yes. Councilor Yacobellis? Yes. Mayor Spiller? Yes. All right. Now it's passed. Uh, next is ordinance. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, next is ordinance 02228, which is an ordinance amending the Montclair Code, Chapter 249, Property Abandoned and Vacant, and I so move. Second. It's moved and seconded. So uh, next, without objection, I'm going to open the public hearing. Uh, is there any objection? Seeing none, anyone wishing to speak to this ordinance? As I had, I had spoken about this last go-round, right? 
Um, and my issue was that you across the street from me and in other places in town, there's a house that's been vacant because there was a fire. It's been vacant. It'll be three years in February, and nothing has really changed except it's boarded up. They do mow the lawn, et cetera. So I, I believe that it's in compliance with all your codes. But my question was, and I, unfortunately, I could not read the ordinance because for some reason it didn't take me to the ordinance when I clicked on it and you could confirm that that's the case. So I couldn't read it. So I was wondering if the change in the ordinance does say anything about a time limit for when a house can remain vacant and un, you know, unrepaired or unsold and nothing going on with it. it does the amended ordinance include anything like that? Uh, thank you for, for the question and certainly uh, uh, Mr. Scannerberry, I'll, I'll turn over to, to speak to some of this piece. Um, the, I will say, and, and uh, I'll ask our assistant attorney to, to opine as well because I've had some interactions with this. Uh, fortunately, unfortunately, I won't pass judgment, under the law, what we have the ability to do is make sure property is kept in good, mm -hmm. relatively good appearance and that it's safe, right? Yeah. So, um, yes, yard upkeep and, and probably dating back, uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor, you'd be able to help with this maybe about six, seven years ago when we passed an aggressive uh, ordinance to um, do upkeep of properties. That was one of the big things, and we were at the forefront at the time on that one. Very aggressive. Um, we aggressively work to do that maintenance and bill back, yeah. right? If you look at the changes in this ordinance, you know, it ex it's extensive in that regard yeah. in terms of what's offered. Mm -hmm. But I say all that to say, and uh, there's a separate ordinance on this. You might remember the number. I'm sure you do, uh, Madam Attorney, but um, I don't. But there's another ordinance which, which is around what options does the township have if a property is in, like, disrepair overtly, like not just maintaining the lawn or yeah. physical look mm -hmm. or other pieces. Uh, we've had this run in. It's very limited in that we are able to send code enforcement and others, and we work out with the property owner to do walkthroughs, to make sure it's safe structurally, some of those things, if they meet the minimum requirement of requirement of making it a safe structure yeah. or if it's even not sealing it up and make sure it's, you know, if they do those basic things we do not have the right under the law from what has been expressed um, to say you know you've got to go like fix this or make this look nice or something yeah. like that we've got to maintain the law and you've got to do some other safety pieces um, uh, uh, madam attorney I'll, I'd ask if, if, if there's a piece that I missed or if that properly encapsulates uh, what we've run into with the intersection of those two ordinances that that work together Right. Thank you, Mayor. Um, now, I, I do recognize that this particular ordinance um, had been tabled because of some of the questions that you raised. And um, with respect to a vacant property, there is an owner attached to a vacant property. And um, there's, it's unlawful to have the owner force the owner to sell or demolish a property. But there are other um, enforcements within the ordinance that um, focus on safety, issues for focus on um, enforcement of maintaining the property fine there can be fines up to two thousand dollars a day if um, that property is not kept up and I would just um, invite you to look at uh, section 249.5 which discusses some of those property maintenance mm -hmm. issues so certainly if there is something going on that that requires some attention code enforcement is uh, is um, who should be called. Yep, I, um, I get it. I mean, I get what you're saying. You, we can't force them to repair the building. We, it's like demolition by neglect almost, because mm. eventually the house will fall down. I mean, that's what's going to happen if they don't do anything. I'm, I'm sure I would imagine that this particular owner will eventually do something, but at this point, you know, it's been almost three years in February that the house has remained vacant and it was a fire so uh, there'd be fire damage inside there'd be water damage inside that is not good for the property god knows what's going on inside but if you look at the outside it's in pretty much you know it's a eyesore anyway i appreciate you're looking at this i understand that there's you know I, I would clashing have, ordinances or whatever mr scannerberry I'd, I'd turn it to you but i'd probably say this is probably about as strong as we felt it could yeah. legally be and, okay. you know but mr scannerberry anything to add to that? i i agree with that i have a question for mr vito i believe there may be a differentiation between a bank owned and a properly held home too the process that code enforcement has to take on that so i don't know if this particular uh residence is bank owned or whether a uh a resident owns it. What's the address to that? Uh, 39 Walnut Street. And I'm sympathetic, you know, to the people who like, may own it. I'm not quite sure 
if they still own it or the bank owns it. I, I just Come don't know. I'll, I'll check on that tomorrow. Yeah. I'll get back to you. And, uh, I mean, I, I just think even for the future, I'm not, like, picking on no, this particular it. house. Yeah, we'll, we'll know, carefully this note this in, is yeah. not an ordinance for any specific one property. Okay. <laughs> 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 just, well, just to I note that. It yeah, you, you, you I see it every right. day from my kitchen, but thank you. Yeah. No, Mr. Deputy Mayor, you want yeah, to? Yeah, just one more thing, uh, yeah. Carmel. Um, in addition to what's been mentioned, Mr. Jason Santarcangelo, who is our attorney here in town, who's worked with us very well over the years with addressing oh, the very issues practice. that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. And um, he takes a very aggressive approach within the law, yeah. perfectly within the law, but that's definitely something that he would also take a, a look at as well, and I defer to Mr. Vito on that as well. Th that's correct, yes. Okay. yes. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else wishing to be heard on this ordinance? <coughs> Seeing none, without objection, I'll close the, he close the hearing. Any one of my colleagues wishing to be heard on this ordinance? Seeing none, Madam Clerk. Councilor Cummings? Yes. Deputy Mayor Herlock? Yes. Councilor Price Abrams? Yes. Councilor Russo? Yes. Councilor Schlager? Yes. Councilor Yacobellis? Yes. Mayor Spiller? Yes. Next is new ordinances, ordinance 02229, which is an ordinance to approve the redevelopment plan for Lackawanna Plaza in the township of Montclair, and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Janice, would you mind uh, approaching? Uh, would you mind speaking to this? You know, uh, public might be going, all right, this is being introduced again. You've introduced this, so there's that piece of it. Uh, what your recommendation is on time frame and days that, that go along with this, so on and so forth. And I know there's other things uh, related uh, to this later in the agenda as well, but uh, please. Uh, absolutely. It was brought to my attention that the link on the December 6th Council agenda was to a earlier version of the redevelopment plan. Okay. It was not the link to the ver version of the redevelopment plan that we had distributed and that was available on the township website. Um, so in order to um, ensure that proper procedures, and we don't have to work with a previous version of the plan, um, we thought it was best to reintroduce the plan um, with the link to the proper version of the redevelopment plan um, and include a time frame for planning board review of 40, 46 days, which would bring us to the same February 4th date that your previous uh, uh, ordinance included. And that way we preserve the integrity of the process. Okay. Um, so I still move for, for clarity with the 46 days that you're noting. All right. If you could say this, if there's any other questions, I'll just say here. Um, okay. It, it's been moved, seconded. Any questions, concerns, comments from my colleagues? Yeah. So. Councilman Cummings. We are officially moving this tonight. The correct version. Yes. Okay. So does that mean the planning boards gets the same to start looking at the correct version? Or do we remain? So they started with the incorrect version, but. We're just going to say that's okay, right? No, I th it was actually never sent to the planning board. The, the planning board had the version that was um, on the township website. That's the version that I gave to everybody at the meetings. So, first of all, the the we never actually advanced the resolution from the December sixth meeting to the planning board. What they've been working um, on reviewing for the past month has been the correct version. Okay. October 24th. Any other questions, concerns, comments? Seeing none, Madam Clerk. Wait, wait. Hang on. So you're saying we had to do this tonight to just correct a technical flaw, that's all. That's exactly what it is. So we're not going to be doing all kinds of discussion and rehashing what we want to do and all. But if this is a, a, a reintroduction of this of the same thing we should have re we should have introduced, do we have to do a second reading on it? There will be a second reading, but and my recommend, but that's after the 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 planning board review. Okay, so the planning board review is ongoing. We gave them more time, right? Right. I'm just doing this for the public. I'm a teacher, okay? I'm a teacher. Maybe I do understand all of it, but I really don't. But I'd like the public to know what we're doing because they often think we're not doing the right thing in sun in the sunlight, okay? That's the perception out there. That's all. I'm teaching this at Montclair State. Now, all I'm saying is if you do this tonight, it doesn't change the clock at all. No, it doesn't. 
Right. Am I right about that? I hear laughter from the side. I don't know. Um, it doesn't change the clock at all. So now when is the next step for people to know? Well, Planning board has it. They met last night. That's their last meeting on it, right? No, they've actually met. They've met two weeks in a row to discuss it. The original December 6th resolution, I mean, ordinance, gave them until February 4th. Reintroducing it tonight, instead of having 60 days, my recommendation is to reduce it to 46 days. It still has the February 4th time frame. So right now, they've reviewed it twice this month. They still have the month of January to go over there and report and finalize their comments. They've been, they understand that the deadline is, is February 4th, and I think that they're ready to, to schedule their review with that deadline. Oh, so they're willing to cut back the number of days that we originally gave them? No. Do you think they're willing to cut back? They, they've been reviewing it since it was the, the initial introduction. So they've actually, I guess, we, they've had two meetings discussing it. I understand that, but I thought we gave them more time purposely because Councillor Cummings wanted us to delay the introduction, which yeah. we didn't do, but we came up with a great compromise proposed by my wonderful colleague, Lori Price Abrams, to make it 60 days so it would overall come out to be the same amount of time, right. giving them a little more time, which a lot of people are talking about there's not enough time being spent. So now you're saying 15 days could be shaved off of that. Not, not being said, we're introducing it again, so it's the number of days we approved last time minus the number of days that have happened since that meeting, which gets you the same number of days. <coughs> Giving them 46 additional days. 60 minus 14 because it's 46. So it's the same amount of time. Oh, so it's still 60 days overall. Right. Oh, good. I was always bad in math. I flunked algebra in high school. All right, thank you. So here's my question to also Janice. The reason the request was made for the extra time was so that they were able to get the traffic study and have that included in their final report. Okay. So will we have the traffic study done in time for them? Well, I have received proposals from various uh, traffic engineering firms. Two of them have said that they could get their study done by February 4th. So then that, so they don't have enough time, which is the reason why we said we were going to give them time so that they could get the study, and now they're not going to get the study based on the proposals that we received. All I can say is I, I got two proposals that they said that they could get the traffic study done by February 4th. Whether or not it, we can give it to, it will not be available for the first planning board meeting in January and probably not the second one. So it'll get to the council. So you'll right, get the, tra the council will get the traffic study and the council will get the report from the planning board is what I anticipate. Right, but I just want to reiterate the reason why the council extended the time was so that the traffic study would be right. in the hands of the planning board for them to be able to review it before they gave us a recommendation. Will that still be able to happen? Because we were, it was yes last meeting, is it still yes today? I, I, I don't have an answer to that. Most likely not, because I, I, all I can say is that two firms said that they could get it done by February 4th. Now, we've been handed something tonight. It was passed I'd, to me. I don't know what it is. I just have a question. Uh, Councilman Bell. Is this a report? This is a, a possible traffic study report? Proposals. I don't want to appear stupid here. I, somebody handed me this report, Bright. It looks like the traffic lights. That's a proposal. For what? Uh, it's for a separate agenda item that's on the agenda. Later. For later? So, yep. Oh, well, then why am I looking at it? Who, <laughs> oh, boy. Lodge. Councilman uh, Yacobos. Ms. Talley, what would, the, what would the planning board do with the traffic study in terms of what we've asked them to do with regard to the review of the redevelopment plan and their fiduciary responsibilities? I, I think that they would review, if, the traf if they had the traffic study, they would look through it, and if they agreed with the, some of the conclusions or their recommendations, they would add that to their report. Does having the traffic study affect in any way their determination that elements of the plan are consistent or inconsistent with the master plan? Probably not. Okay. Thank you. So I want to just, please, I don't, people up here for a reason. So to, I want to be very, not semantical, but 
what we said we were going to do and the reason why we said we were going to do it, which was to make sure that the planning board had the traffic study before they gave us their conclusion. That's what we agreed to. And now what you're telling me is that that may not be able to happen based on where we are currently, correct? That's correct. So I don't think we can speak for the planning board as to what this traffic study will mean to them. That's something that I hope the planning board would be able to answer, not us. So I think this is back to where I was very bad at the beginning. We are not doing this thoroughly. We're, we're introducing this again where we originally tried to introduce it in October. And now here we are, December 20th, introducing it again. And so I'm very concerned about this process. And so I just challenge my council colleagues to live up to the word that we, we say that we're gonna do and not attempt to circumvent that process. So that's all I have to say. Any other questions, concerns, comments? Councilman, uh, Councilwoman Price Hammers. Thanks. Um, so, Ms. Talley, I just want to clarify because I may have missed the response you just gave. What expertise does the planning board have relative to traffic is part of its overall purview relative to what the council could bring to that same thing? Is it one of the inputs we should be considering as we take the feedback from the planning board, the traffic study that could come directly to us? Or I just want to understand the purview of the planning board with regard to traffic should this be rightly in there that's what i'm we're all trying to understand how how essential that piece is or is not necessarily as long as we all have it before decisions rendered the planning board's task is to evaluate the redevelopment plan for consistency with the master plan and that's what they're doing um to do that it it's not absolutely necessary to have a traffic study. We have had input from their traffic expert. Um, so I don't think it's absolutely necessary for them to have it for their report. I do think it's good to have the traffic, re traffic study before adoption of the redevelopment plan because practically speaking, it will include an evaluation of traffic conditions identification of mitigation measures that might be necessary for different intersections and it gives you the council the ability to include some of those improvements that may be needed in the redevelopment plan to your roadway so mm -hmm. um, related that if if the council receives the traffic study having gotten of course the feedback already from the planning board we could, we could choose to send it over there for their input before we render our decision as well. I mean, absolutely. we're not precluded from re-engaging the planning board in some fashion. That's, you're absolutely right. Okay, so, it, you know, I want to be clear that, for one, the timeline of this reintroduction is sort of, it's, it's technical in nature because the same thing is going on that started two weeks ago at the meeting that we gave them 60 days. They will have the benefit of the full 60 days they will not have the traffic study if, if I understand what is available based on the, the um, responses that you receive to the um, posting. And um, we will have opportunities to factor it as the council. We will have opportunities to go back to the planning board as we see fit to ask for their input and any other parties that would benefit from evaluating what the traffic study, you know, means. Absolutely. So we are not we're not really cut off at the knees by doing it this way. We keep it moving forward. We can't do it any faster, it would appear. Right. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? Um, seeing none, uh, Madam Clerk. Councilor Cummings? No. Deputy Mayor Harlock? No. Councilor Price Abrams? Yes. Councilor Russo? No. Councilor Schlager? Yes. Councilor Yacobellis? Yes. Mayor Spiller? Yes. Motion carries. Next, we have um, Ordinance 02232, which is an ordinance amending uh, 01830, uh, I can't read that, 33, 35, creating certain offices, positions, 
and employments in the Township of Montclair, Essex County, fixing salaries uh, thereof. And I so move. Second. Uh, who seconded? It's been. You did let you second it because I got questions. It's been moved and seconded. With that, I will move with a modification. Um, I'm not sure. I saw Councilwoman um, Price Abrams' um, question, email. Thank you. Uh, certainly, I know we've had the discussions around rent control officer and rent control administrator. The other two I have not seen before in terms of salaries, positions, et cetera. Um, so I am moving as modified to approve the rent control officer and rent control administrator, uh, but not the business coordinator or office administrator until certainly committees or otherwise get much more detail on that. So that is uh, my amended motion. I, I second, second that. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. That's the, that's the motion that we have. Um, would anyone care to speak to the motion? Yes, Mayor. All I was going to do was ask that same question because I didn't know what those two were. Could the manager maybe answer that a little, clarify? Because I don't want to eliminate those, but I didn't want to do them now because I didn't know about it. I can Steve. explain to the counselor. And Thank I you. did forward a, an email to Councillor Price Abrams regarding the other two positions. The other two positions are the grant funded positions for the Office of Small Business Advocacy that. Um, we received the grant for the $450,000 grant that was inserted into the 2023 budget, and those are the positions for that that position, those positions. Well, well to be clear, the grant could be used for anything, correct? Well, the recommendation the, the, is to the, use the, the grant. The it's totally grant funded for four years, and the $450,000 is there to fully fund those positions and everything associated with the office. I got what you're saying. I'm saying the grant is to do it as we choose. The, the request is to add these positions. The yes, those two positions are part of the small business office. Now, the, excuse me, Mayor, the rent control officer, I want to get this clear, and I hope those two young ladies are listening as I ask this question. There's going to be a rent control officer with a minimum salary of $75,000 and a maximum of ninety five. Am I correct? That's the range of the range. salary. And then a rank control administrator, 67 to 87. So we're going to have two full-time people working well, on rent control? Well, not necessarily. Oh. Because I'm still the rent control officer, and there will be someday a stipend associated with that, which will be much less than the $75,000. So the full-time uh, position would be the rent control administrator, who's actually going to be running the day-to-day, -day responding to the landlords and tenants, et cetera. And like I said, I, I, um, I should have forwarded it to, to all of you, but I was uh, answering specifically to Councilor Price Abrams what the function of that job is. So. Okay, Price, Councilor a Price Abrams says she has it, has that time to read it. I'll read it after she reads it. I have no problem. Your explanation I, I, is very good. I can good. send it out to you. Your explanation is very good because we never expected to have two full-time positions anyway in the rent control office, right? Yeah. But what you're saying is we're creating these so we have these and we have the budgeted resources if we have to do anything if you have to do it or if yes. we have to pay stipend okay thank you mm -hmm. i understand it now i just Catch have a yucca bells uh, thank you if um we could just see uh, a red line version of 018 uh 035 from 2020 when we passed it i was just it's this one with the grid with all the positions and the minimum maximum salaries per year so if we could just add this into this because i just want to see a comparison um, to all the other roles that we have. So this is the ordinance we passed when we first got sworn in in July of 2020, the salary ordinance going through 2024. Right, and there, the there was one for 2022, and I think there's one being modified now for 2023, which would include those positions we're talking about now. Yes, yeah, so I just want to see it in the grid so I can look at it against the other positions. So just a red line version of this with the changes. I will get that for you from Ms. Rao Thank tomorrow. You. Okay. Thank you. Okay, here, yeah, Councilwoman uh, Price Savers. So um, I'm, I'm not perfectly clear. At the present time, we don't have someone in the role in the uh, rank control office as an administrator. You've been serving as that officer, but there's not an administrator. Actually, the, the person that's performing that function, we have someone performing that function, and she's getting a stipend now, okay? And th th she's going to be promoted to that full full-time position because I'm taking three quarters of her time from her job currently to perform that function. Uh, say it again, you're taking? Taking pretty much three quarters of her existing time from her job and that's why she's getting a stipend for it 
to perform that function of an administrator. Okay. She's the one responding to the uh, landlords, responding to the tenants. She's responding to waiver requests. She's responding to hardship requests. She's mailing out the, uh, the, all of the information, both the regular mail and the certified mail. So she's doing a full-time job. Okay. And that, that's why I want to make her full-time and reward her for the job that she's doing because she's doing a fully function. She, she's uh, serving in that capacity across the board. And it just makes sense. Okay, thank you. So mm -hmm. the chart, uh, Council Yacobellis, that you just held up, so that's from an ordinance that we enacted previously. I don't know where I don't know where it fits in that chart, and, and it, is, is it, it the level of service? I, I don't know. The, jo I'm just the job asking. does not exist now. Okay, so it will be inserted in the 2023 non-management, non-union salary ordinance. Okay, okay. so that's that, what you're that's saying. What, to that's what that. Mrs. Rao is working on, and that's where you'll see that position. Okay, thank you. <coughs> thank you very much. So we, we have moved, this is to move the rent control officer, rent control administrator, uh, not the other two positions. Um, for approval, and Councilman has noted, let's see that in the, uh, also in the chart as well. All right, with that, uh, Madam Clerk. Councilor Cummings? Yes. Deputy Mayor Herlock? Yes. Councilor Price Abrams? Yes. Councilor Russo? Yes. Councilor Schlager? Yes. Councilor Yacobellis? Yes. Mayor Spiller? Yes. Uh, Mr. Scannerberry, I'd also suggest let's set up a meeting with Jason and the bid. I know that they have some thoughts on that grant as well. I know it approached uh, me and a number of us uh, n numerous times to, to kind of okay. look at what that would look like, and uh, we can go from there. I, I have spoken to Jason uh, about the position, and we talked about what the collaboration would be. But the Small Business Association, when they did the budgeting, they've accounted for the usage of the monies and was specific to the office and the usage of the office. And I can share that information, what was shared with the Small Business Administration, which approved that to give us this grant. Okay, not sure I'm following you, but you can share what you've got uh, another time. Thank you. And if I, may. I mean, the council, to enlist the council some. members, to, so, you know, if it, I would be happy to be part of a committee, but the designated other committee that, you know, just so we're in Well, it's a grant, so education committee. And, yeah, the uh, education, the education committee. subcommittee would be. Well, we haven't met about it, so we would appreciate the opportunity to then discuss it, and then we can move it hopefully early in the year. Thank you. One, one, is this a, is this a conversation, well, is this a thing that Jason and you were talking about last year about creating and working together on this? Right, and actually the idea for this office began in 2018. So yeah, Jason and I did discuss it and that's what we were talking about collaborating on because I did advise him that the grant was received. That is what I was talking right. about. Okay. Yeah. Yep. He talked about this. Okay. Next, uh, we've got a number of items. Items one through 17 on consent agenda. And I so move. Second. It's been moved and second. Seconded. It's on consent agenda. We discussed it last time, so I'm assuming no other pieces there. So, Madam Clerk. Wait, 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 wait. Did we, we want to pull anything out of this? I don't know. I, just, I don't have to pull anything. I just have a question about uh, item three. Uh, item three. Go ahead. Uh, Ms. Talley, if you could just explain. I didn't understand the the chart with the rankings. I saw that it was number one, number two, then three of them were at number five and the dollar amount. So what are we actually recommending go forward with grants? Is that just the ranking and we hope that they choose our top right. several up till a certain amount? How does that's that work? Actually, that's actually not number three. That is number, I have. Oh, I'm sorry. It's the. Um, I have to find it on here, but it's a different number. Yeah, three is the representative. Um, three is the representative. Do you see the number? It's number 30. Okay. Yes, it's number 30. I have a question. Yeah, so that'll be on the agenda. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. It's on, not on the consent agenda. So okay. back to seconding the consent agenda. <laughs> okay. All right. Without hearing others, uh, Madam Clerk. Councilor Cummings? Yes. Deputy Mayor Herlock? Yes. Councilor Price Abrams? Yes. Councilor Russo? I had um, a 
The question on number 16 I had, just to get this clear, is that the, Ford, the vehicles we were buying were increasing the contract by 6,500. Are we trying to save money, or what? Do you, we had to pay more for those vehicles, or just give me a explanation. Number sixteen. I'm going to vote yes on it, but I just had a question on it. Ryan, do you know what purchase of those vehicles that we had to add money? What the chief is saying is that uh, due to unforeseen production delays and microchip shortages, a change order was required to increase it by 6,000. That's 000. what it was, right? We had yes. to get a different vehicle, actually. Well, yeah, a different yeah, there, company. There, there's shortages across the board, right. so. So what we originally were going to buy, we couldn't. Yeah. Thank you, Brian. Okay. Yes, my vote is yes. I'm sorry. Councilor Schlager? Uh, yes. Councilor Yacobales? Yes. Mayor Spiller. Yes. Thank you. Next is resolution R22245, which is a resolution to adopt the council meeting schedule for 2023. I know in speaking uh, separately to a number of my colleagues about trying to figure this out, uh, appreciate the, the work of the subcommittee is working on it. I know there was a lot of back and forth, and then this date doesn't work for someone, and that date doesn't work. Uh, therefore, I'm proposing we go back to the original, original calendar here. Um, everyone has it in front of them. I will note, though, Additionally, adding June 20th, so Madam Clerk, it would say June 13th and June 20th, so we have two June meetings. Um, that goes back to everything being back in. Um, if anyone is not able to make a meeting and is an item for their ward or anything else, we would absolutely do the deference that we usually do. Uh, but that puts us back to the same number of meetings we always have, um, and also everything in there that was in the original. And I know it means that everybody is going to miss a meeting or two or, or what the normal course is. But hearing from everybody, once we start started to run down the path of this one moved, that one moved, we ended up in a just non-tenable uh, situation. So that is my motion to move to the calendar with every uh, meeting that we have on this thing, plus the June 20th as well. And I so move. June 13th and 20th would be the two. So I had for it, okay, if there's okay. a debate on it, is there a second or no? Second. Did you, oh, you did? I did. Oh, you did. They quietly yeah. said second. <laughs> now Councilman Cummings. Yes, yeah, so I had requested because I will be out of town that we move the April eleventh meeting to April April twelfth and the March twenty eighth meeting to March twenty seventh which based on the emails I thought we had all agreed were okay. And so again, we've made, uh, we've made accommodations in the past for others to, where we've made you know, significant changes to it. So I I'd still would like those because I, especially considering that the Lackawanna redevelopment plan will be discussed quite a bit. And I wanna be here for every one of those meetings. And I'm not asking for anything but moving one meeting from a Monday up to the, the uh, meeting from the 12th to the 11th and the 28th to the 27th. Well, uh, Councilman, I think part of the problems that arise, you know, it immediately, I know even one of those doesn't work for me, but it immediately triggered the, there's about 20 other dates and they've all, you know, everyone could opine here, but everyone then came back with, I need this one moved, I need that one moved. Um, that ended up being just uh, not doable. So you're right. It did, did turn into can we move this do that and at the end of it then it's ended up with the same We need more meetings moved. So uh, that was so to your point that that's was uh, what triggered it But then it did trigger a number of other meetings uh, to be moved So when did all this change because the last email I received Councilman Yacobellis had said that he agreed to the changes I that agree. I requested I Council Russo agreed to the changes and I know Councilor Schlager did so I'm trying to figure and I know Councilor Herlock did as well, um, because I also agreed to one of the requests that he had. So I'm trying to figure out when did that change, and that's based on email exchanges. Councilor, so just just make a motion to amend. Yeah, and the answer is it changed uh, to your point where Councilman uh, or the Deputy Mayor wanted uh, uh, less meetings. Uh, then it was another one wanted one less meeting beyond that, and another one wanted not less meetings. So it became that back and forth. To your, All right, to your so answer. to the, Thank you, Councilor. Just, just so I can clarify, okay. though, Ms. Mayor, I didn't want, quote, less meetings. I just wanted the May 2nd meeting, which I had four or five colleagues agreed to do as well. So I, I didn't want less meetings. One less, then. That, that's, yeah. But let's, but let's just clarify, because okay. we know how things get 
crazy out here. I did not want less meetings. I just asked for the May meeting to be moved. Understood and to I be. Had a, let me finish. Mm -hmm. I had a conflict, and also we, we many of us go to the Memorial Day ceremony as well. So I'm trying to juggle, quote, part-time schedules that we all have, close quote. So I fully understood, and I know then Councilman Yuck Bells wanted one less as well at that point, right? So then we started to get into I'm their. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, only answering Councilman Cummings as to why it then unraveled because you're hearing it. Okay, so, well, um, I would put forth a motion to amend this to accommodate the crust that I put forward. C can you say those Before dates again? April 11th to April 12th, March 28th to March 27th. I'm okay with that, Councilor Cummings, if you'll throw in my May request, please. Yeah, I'm all good with me. Yeah, I Which I'm I already sorry. had four yes. or five votes. So. I'd yes. like to strike June 20th so we don't have June 20th. Okay, so, so to follow along, and, and like to you have to have hold on, one person needs to make the motion on the, on the amendments, and you're welcome to do all these if you're doing it, Councilman Cummings, but you are, to be clear uh, to everyone here in the public, changing the April 11th to April 12th, the March... 26th, sorry, 28th to 27th. Um, Mr. Deputy Mayor, you're asking that part of his amendment is also to strike and not have the which meeting? The May 2nd. The May 2nd meeting. The so we already have Memorial Day. And then we're Fair adding. Enough. So no meeting in May 2nd. And also, Councilman Yacobelis, you're asking that he also amended to do what? To not add June 20th. Oh, that's, not all, that's not written. So I'd like to not add June 20th. Okay, to so not add the June 20th. So that's to keep that one off. Um, so... Uh, that's that's the motion. Am I correct in that? That's so that nice second I, your motion. And I'll third your motion. How's okay. that? J just to clarify, Mayor, with Councillor Cummings, what I said when I got the message was it seemed like just a moving of the date to a Monday in one case and the moving of the date to Wednesday. So people have to understand it won't be a Tuesday, it'll be a Monday and a Wednesday in two of these weeks. And that's just to accommodate. Uh, and I think we have to all accept that we're going to once in a while miss a meeting. So I support it. Yes, I, I, just noting that you were the one who noted too. You didn't want less meetings, but that's what this does as well. Well, so it's one less meeting. It's two less. Well, it's not the five that we originally got back in October. Noted, but just to be clear, so we got two less. Yes. If we're going to go that entire route, which I do not want less meetings, I want us to have meetings. I think we've met twenty-one in the past. I don't know if, we're the, or if twenty-two. We're down to. I don't know what this brings us down to without counting quickly, but I think the three summer months off, I think I, I didn't need the summer months entirely with June uh, in terms of I would do two meetings in June as we have previously. I will be missing a meeting in February for my other uh, commitments, but I, I don't want there to be less meetings overall. And, and for that reason, I don't support what we just went to. If we are going to try and change all that, I would put the May 2nd to a May 9th or uh, checked on my schedule. I think I could do the eighth so we're, we are going to do this all here so another in that case I, I don't support the change um, I don't want to not have a May meeting uh, only one May meeting I think that's inappropriate we have we have business to attend to some of us have committees that are more robustly meeting some of us have less of that we need the time to come together as a body to discuss the matters that are before us to, to learn about the things that others have been working on for us to come together therefore and and move the town forward I don't I don't see moving two meetings off of this schedule. That's my strong feeling. Appreciate it. That's the beauty of the debate on the motion, and uh, that's the uh, amendment that has been moved. Uh, any other uh, questions? And, and I concur in many ways uh, to that, but I, I certainly as noted uh, uh, with my motion. Any other questions, concerns, comments on the amendment? Hearing none, uh, Madam Clerk, on the amendment. Councilor Cummings? Yes. Deputy Mayor Herlock? Yes. Councilor Price Abrams? No. Councilor Russo? No. Councilor Schlager? Yes. Councilor Yacobellis? Yes. Mayor Spiller? No. Next uh, is the motion now. That was the amendment. So the, it's been amended for the schedule to include those dates. We are now at the main motion of the schedule. So it's a technicality here, I get, but we're back to the main motion. So, Madam Clerk, if you'll call the motion with those amended dates. Councilor Cummings? Yes. Deputy Mayor Herlock? Yes, again. Councilor Price Abrams? Forgive me, what did we vote on before? What are we voting on now? The amendment, and the amendment now becomes the main motion, so we do have to vote on the main motion, which is those new dates. Okay, no. Councilor Russo? Yes. Councilor Schlager? Yes. Councilor Yacobellis? Yes. Mayor Spiller? No. 
Uh, next is resolution R22275, which is authorizing a transfer of funds, NJSA 40A colon 4 58. And I so move. Second. So moved and seconded. Any questions, concerns, comments? Seeing none, Madam Clerk. Councillor Cummings? Yes. Deputy Mayor Herlock? Yes. Councillor Price Abrams? Yes. Councillor Russo? Yes. Councillor Schlager? Yes. Councillor Yacobellis? Yes. Mayor Spiller? Yes. <clears throat> All right. Next one out. Okay, next is resolution R22276, which is a resolution authorizing the amendment of the not to exceed amount of resolution R22278, authorizing the professional uh, service agreement with our uh, special tax council for the Township of Montclair 2022. I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Questions, concerns, comments? Yeah, I just have one question. Mm -hmm. Is it possible for us to get a account of how many times we go, we extend the not to exceed amounts? All the time. <laughs> yeah, that's, well, I well, just well, don't I, know. Say those but I want to know, we set it, it low to, right. you know, you I'd just like to know right what now. that number is, mm -hmm. because I'd rather just, you know, come as close to possible in terms of just once you start budgeting, you know, so my point is, is it is this something that, Mr. Manager, that Ms. Rao can get for us? So just, and I'll just ask for a go back a year or two, not. Yes, uh, she can check on that, but in this particular case and then another particular case. No, I'm not. I'm not I, just, I just wanted to explain that there's been an increase in the tax appeals. That's why we had to go. Understood, but yeah, I'm, it's, not, yeah. it's not about this. It's about just the practice all over the course of the time we do this. That's yes, all. it's a short answer. Thank you. Yeah. So do you want me to vote now? Or, no, you didn't go to vote yet. <laughs> I have a question on this one. This is the same attorney I saw the name of just today on something else. And I've often questioned where we're, why we're going out to Warren, New Jersey for this attorney. I questioned in the past. Now I have another question today. If this attorney is representing someone in a litigation, is there any conflict or any problem? I'm asking our town attorney. You know what I'm talking about? No, can you clarify? Councilmember? I'd rather not. No. I'm, I'm okay. he's representing the town. Jeannie, do you know what I'm talking about? Is this the same one as representing the town? Well, rather, I, rather than correct, I would say you've got to have a conversation appropriate or, or whatnot. Yeah, I'm not sure, but uh, something has to happen. You want to step outside, Mr. Council yeah, he's, this person's outside. a tax counsel, but he's also a counsel to someone who we're in litigation with. Is he? Not that I'm aware of. Not Well, you should get aware of it, maybe. Not that, you know. <laughs> not that I'm aware of. All right. Look at something that was just sent to us today, late today, from... Uh, Gina, I got it. Are you aware? Excuse me. Well, I, 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 I believe Mr. Asked. Bernstein only does tax appeals, Any? to the best of my knowledge. I'm I'm someone's pushing. I apologize. <laughs> I, I believe Mr. Bernstein only does tax appeals, so unless it's a tax appeal type matter that that the township is litigating over, I wouldn't. And, and I think he would, he would, he would, he would have someone. a conflict. He would have a conflict, and he wouldn't be able to represent that individual because he's a township council, outside council. All right. Well, so unless Gina, you, Gina knows what I'm talking about, I'm not going to go further into it. Any other questions, concerns, comments? Um, seeing none, Madam Clerk. Councilor Cummings. Yes. Deputy Mayor Herlock? Yes. Councillor Price Abrams? Yes. Councillor Russo? Abstain. Councillor Schlager? Yes. Councillor Yacobellis? Yes. Mayor Spiller? Yes. Next is resolution R22277, which is a resolution authorizing the amendment not to exceed the amount of R22129 for the professional service agreement with Hendricks Appraisal, Tax Court Appraisals, Services for Tax Assessment in, 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 uh, in the Township of Montclair. I so move. Second. It's moved and seconded. Any questions, concerns, or comments? Seeing none, Madam Clerk. Councilor Cummings? Yes. Deputy Mayor Herlock? Yes. Councilor Price Abrams? Yes. Councilor Russo? Yes. Councilor Schlager? Yes. Councilor Yacobellis? Yes. Mayor Spiller? Yes. Next is resolution R22278, 
authorizing the amendment not to exceed amount for R22-130 for professional services agreement with G. Francesco Bateman, uh, Coley, Yospin, Kuzman, et cetera, for a special tax counsel. I so move. Second. It's moved and seconded. Questions, concerns, comments? Seeing none, uh, Madam Clerk. Councilor Cummings? Yes. Deputy Mayor Herlock? Yes. Councilor Price Abrams? Yes. Councilor Russo? Abstain. Councilor Schlager? Yes. Councilor Yacovellis? Yes. Mayor Spiller? Uh, yes. Next is resolution 22279, which is a resolution of the Township of Montclair to move from the Garden State Joint Insurance Fund to the New Jersey Intergovernmental Insurance Fund. Uh, I'd say, Mr. Scandalberry, I certainly have a number of questions on this. Can you please opine as to this recommendation? Yes, I can, Mayor. Uh, based on the recommendation of the township's risk manager and the township's financial advisor, they both strongly recommended that effective January 1st, the township will move from the Garden State Joint Insurance Fund to the New Jersey Intergovernmental Insurance Fund for three years, terminating in 2025. Movement to the New Jersey Intergovernmental Insurance Fund saved the township a 7.2 increase in the premium payment in 2023 with increases in co uh, coverage factors. I have Mr. Marullo here from uh, IMAC who was there and given us the advice and Ms. Waters. I don't know if Ms. Waters wants to come up. Excuse but me. If, oh, but if you would, Mr. Marullo, if there are any questions, Mr. Okay. Marullo is here. It, no, it, uh, what you just said before you, the CFO, who did you say by recommendation of? The, the risk manager in the township's financial advisor. Miss manager, I'm sorry. I didn't the hear that. Risk a risk manager. Risk. Thank you. You, said, you thought I said miss manager? Yes. I was. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we're good at okay. Thank you. I think. Mr. Marullo. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we're from IMAC Insurance Agency. We're the risk manager for the. Is this on? Yeah. Uh, for the township. Um, so your property and casualty insurance and the liability insurance is all pooled uh, right now with the Garden State Municipal Joint Insurance Fund. Um, every three years, it's a three-year commitment to go with one fund, and our job as your risk manager is to uh, market the coverage to other like uh, insurance fund funds in the state of New Jersey. Um, so there's a couple different options. There's PERMA-run uh, joint insurance funds. Um, we got a quote from the Suburban Metro Joint Insurance Fund as well, but that was you know much higher than the current premiums that you're paying now. Uh, we got a quote from the New Jersey Inter Intergovernmental Insurance Fund, the NGIF. Excuse yes. Excuse me. Can you turn your mic on, David? I can't. Oh. Thank you. Either, can you, if you're going to talk, can you, all right, because we're, it's interfering with this. All right. So as a result of that marketing, we were able to um, get a couple of different options. So uh, the current fund, Premiums are going up 7.2%. Um, the New Jersey Intergovernmental uh, Fund assessment would be an increase of 1.29%, uh, which is a savings of about $87,000 in premium to the township. Uh, we also did a uh, comparison of the coverages, and there's lowered, some lower deductibles that are meaningful. Um, so uh, you know, when we met with uh, the administration, um, you know, it was recommended that we, that the township move for January uh, to, this, to the new fund. A couple questions I guess I'd have sure. then. Um, one, do you guys have any financial interest in the other company? By no. The way? no. Um, second thing is, um, you know, specific to the, 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 the recommendation that, that we're seeing here, do you know how many municipalities or other entities have been, you know, we've, we've done it with pl other plans and different things. How many, how many municipalities are moving from the one we're in to the one you're recommending? How many have moved from the one you're recommending to the one we're in? So I know that right now for January 1, there's two moving from the Garden State GIF to the NGIF. I don't know over the past, you know, exactly how many have gone from one place to another. Um, most of the time, you know, we've, I don't know if you can answer that question, but, um, it, they're three-year commitments, so you're usually there for three years, and then when three years is up, it kind of just renews. So it's not like people move from GIF to GIF that often, mm -hmm. um, but both have um, – the Garden State GIF has 42 members currently, and the NGIF has 21 members. So, you know, they're which different sizes. I'm sorry, the one we're in is which? 42. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I guess it's tough, you know, not really a question for you, but but I certainly would have some concerns in terms of the you know number of uh, outstanding cases we currently have with the GIF, and quite frankly, their willingness to cover all of our cases and yeah. so unknown the, unknown going. And I'm well aware that they would continue those cases that they yes. would have to. So, um, okay. but moving to another GIF, where with all due respect, you know, how would they have covered it? Would they have covered it? Is a question, um, you know, and and to be. I appreciate the financial recommendation, you know, but uh, we've got ongoing litigation, including some of our financial pieces. So I appreciate the recommendation yes. from that department. But with all due respect, I would say maybe should be a little more independent from that piece of it. Um, so the, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, I know the GIF has served us quite well in terms of what they've covered for us. I'm not surprised given our usage currently, you know, that we see an increase, um, you know, but, uh, you know, if we were in that other space, we were seeing usage numbers equivalent, I'm sure there would be some cost increase there too. Um, so uh, I say all of that gives me, you know, significant pause in this, but thank you. Okay. I don't really have a question there, but thanks. Is there, yeah, I don't know if there's a question. Yeah, not, not really, but thank okay. you. I just want to be clear, you're our risk manager and you're, you're suggesting we switch to the New Jersey Intergovernmental Insurance Fund. Correct. Okay. And Mrs. Scannelberry, the other recommendation was from the chief financial officer? It was from the, well, chief financial officer weighed in, but it was from our chief financial advisor. Okay. Mr. Benigny. Mr. Benigny. Okay, thank you. And just know that chief financial officer Kern has legal claims against our Jeff, right? So just noting that, our current Jeff. Um, that said, Mr. Burr, Ms. DeVito, your attorneys, do you have, have you opined on this? Uh, what's your recommendation on this? We have not done a legal assessment on this. This is the practically the first time we're hearing about that there was a um, recommendation to move forward and switch so we don't we haven't we haven't opined uh, mr. scammer any reason why our legal team wasn't asked about the legal well, switch we just, we just met on this last week it was an omission from the legal team I wasn't even aware that you historically sat down to wait in I just thought it was basically a financial issue in that regard um, I was just stating that we we didn't do a legal assessment on the historically on, did you on, on His, the issue. historically historically would yes. uh, would the law department be included on a on an insurance switch I would believe they would be but I, I've been? only I've only been appointed here for one year mr. Scantlebury okay. so I, I don't believe there's been a switch from the during the time of my appointment no would be but uh, I would tell you as corporate counsel for lesson. some pretty large corporations mm -hmm. Uh, that that would be a um, a question that would have been posed to the law department. Okay, so the so department. the decision has to be made at one one. Four one one is when the decision would need to be made. So you have until like the end of the month. Uh, okay. So Can with I, the, with the, the sooner the better. Could we work with Mr. Burr and Mr. Vito to respond to whatever concerns sure. they may have? Yeah, between them. Yeah, we're available at any time to meet, discuss, give you any information um, you need. All that kind of stuff. I have two questions. One, can we, we can terminate our policy at any point or no, we're so, signing it's a contract. No, it's a contract. So okay. when it renews on January 1st, that would be three years in either scenario that you go with. Yeah. So one of the things I'm trying to understand this, I guess this is a staff question is if, you know, the, obviously the proposal would save us whatever it was, $88,000. 86. What I would want to understand though is how much staff time would go into a switch like this. Um, is there a ton of paperwork? Do we have to, you know, re rename our insurance carrier across the board? Like, what's the? Is there a real net savings if you think about all the time that goes into? And correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Mazzullo, but uh, Marillo, I'm sorry, Mazzullo, someone, else, Mr. <laughs> Marillo, is that uh, the staff time up front would be accumulating all of the outstanding GIF, current GIF uh, claims because they would have to be identified and go Got to it. the Garden State, uh, Jeff. Okay. okay, and any incident post 1-1 would be going to the New Jersey Intergovernmental. So I think the, uh, the accumulation of that, of the outstanding, I think Ms. Waters is here, and she would be um, quite active in pulling out the existing. Absolutely, uh, so we would just m meet with all the department heads, uh, make sure that everyone knows what the right claims forms are, we would provide them all. Um, do you want to get into any more specifics on that, or? No, I, we would just we would just meet with everyone to make sure that everyone was aware of if if the township does move forward with the change, to ensure that as of one one everything is accurately reported to the new fund, and give them all the information that they need in order to do that. Thank you. 
Uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor, and then Council and Price Thank you, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I have a bunch of questions actually. Um, when Mr. Yacobellis just asked you about who, who made the, why the recommendation, can, can, I don't think we got an answer to why. Why, why are you suggesting that we switch? So the, there's a premium savings. Okay. And then there's also uh, significant deductible uh, decreases with uh, the NGIF. I'm sorry. Uh, deductible uh, decreases. So, for example, on the um, <coughs> sorry, let me get to the right spot. So the Garden State GIF has a fifty thousand dollar general liability deductible per claim uh, under the NGIF. The policy would be thirty-five thousand dollars, so it's fifteen thousand dollars less on each claim that gets reported through that line of coverage. Um, Sorry, and that's on top of the premiums. On top of the premium savings, correct. So, uh, I have six items right here. Yep, deductible. Uh, it's a thousand dollar auto physical damage deductible for of vehicles except fire and AMS. Five thousand for the Garden State, Jeff. It's one thousand to five thousand um, dollars. The next would be thirty-five thousand dollars general liability deductible per claim, and the Garden State GIF is fifty thousand dollars. Thirty-five thousand dollars auto liability deduct deductible. Garden State is fifty. Uh, public officials deductible is twenty thousand dollars a claim. Garden State is a hundred thousand plus twenty percent coinsurance on the net four hundred thousand. Employee practices liability deductible same as the public officials. And law enforcement and liability deductible, same as the public officials. So those are the significant changes and uh, differences in deductible. How many, uh, would, if you could ballpark, sorry. The no, 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 go, no, go ahead. Mr. Mr. Rolls here for that. Can you ballpark how many, well, you would know how many claims we average a year? Yeah. It sounds like there's a $15,000 savings on each claim type. Yes. So I just so want to know how many claims we had in this year which or 2021. Aren't there many, many nuances, though, to deductibles? I, mean, I, I know that from my own insurance at home, and yeah. there's lots of nuances. In terms for, of? For deductibles. Um, can you explain nuances? Like, well, just I mean, from my own, uh, my own yep. um, home, and I, I also have pet insurance. Yep. Um, <laughs> um, there's, there's lots. Um, I can't think of an exact example, but... They're not cut and dry, like uh, so, deductibles. Well, the they, policy for that policy year it would be cut and dry. So, for like when you're comparing the two, mm -hmm. you know, one policy has a deductible of thirty-five thousand, one has a deductible of fifty thousand. So, that's just kind of what those policies are. I think she's saying what would trigger you paying the deductible, like the criteria in a in an accident. Yes. Right, like this, like if there are different thresholds for triggering reimbursement rates or whatever the, you know, the different factors are. Right. But if, if you guys could, and, and it's okay if you can come back to it, I, I would just like to know how many claims we had in either calendar 22 or calendar 21 yep. so that we can just do some quick math on how much savings there would be on the deductibles. Sure. Mm -hmm. just, just the right <coughs> 22, can I? Yeah, if you have the numbers well, ready. I looked through 22. 22 is not a, a closed year. There are claims right. still coming in. Um, there was actually only one claim on the uh, general liability side where there would have been the $15,000 savings. Okay. So that's that's for 2022. I'll look through 21 and get back to you. Thank you. But, and the, back what about the auto? Could you look at there were not for 22. There were not. That was the only claim that okay. within this criteria. If I could. I'm sorry, by this criteria, you mean what? What was the, the savings? Okay. Uh, Mr. Deputy, did you have another? Uh, Mr. Deputy, I'd love to finish my question. So thank <laughs> you. Uh, no, you're fine. I said go ahead. Um, uh, I, I'm more concerned with. It's no secret yep. we have a lot of litigation on a lot of different fronts, and I'm going to venture to guess that we're going to have a lot more in the near, not too distant future. That's where my not. I don't not really concerned with all due respect to the auto accidents or yeah. the general what I would call the general claims. Yes. I know, and Mr. Burr, maybe, or Ms. DeVita, in our legal department, you could help me on this one, because I know with the GIF, we've had a history of being able to name counsel that we've worked with over the years and understand us. 
I, I, do we lose any of that if we switch? And we've got active litigation going on with, you know, we're all lawyers. Some of us are lawyers here, and we know contemplation of claims as well, which we're already on notice of. Can, can you help me on this a little bit in terms of, well, I think you, you understand my question. Well, yes, yeah. Well, you, your statement is correct. We have, with the, with the Garden State, Jeff, we are able we to recommend attorneys for specific matters. And um, so that it, that's helpful because if we know someone that we believe can handle a matter particularly well, has a uh, knowledge relationship with the township already, and they're qualified by the GIF to represent us through the GIF, it could be beneficial. Um, again, I, I haven't been able to do, you know, I'm just learning about this today, so Fair I don't enough. know if NGIF would give us the same accommodation, but that would be an important question to ask. And then what happens with our, I, as the mayor said, you know, our, our ongoing cases, they're going to cover, the Garden State GIF will continue to cover because we've paid for that coverage. But moving forward, any claims that come in uh, before we make this switch, does, do they go to GIF, NG, uh, Garden State GIF? Do they go to NGIF? So those are all assessments that you know the legal department would make, um, at least to give an opinion on on um, what coverage we would have. On Part those type of particularly on related claims. I mean, you know, there there are pockets of litigation out there with potential for additional plaintiffs coming forward. That would be one of my concerns, quite frankly, is that we have ongoing litigation. We know there may be other parties in those litigation. In the, so, if, you know, somebody files a motion to amend a, a complaint on January 2nd, and I'm with a new insurance carrier, but it's related to a litigation that's been going on for the last however many months. Can you, when you do your assessment, that's something I'd like yeah. to hear from. Cool. Just, Correct, and we would like to also review the policy, what's accepted from the policy, what's included in the policy, how the policy is different. So that would be important to look at too, right? So th those would be the types of things that we mm -hmm. take. And, and I'd appreciate that. M Mr. Mayor, just as an aside on a purely, you know, uh, scheduling purpose, we, we don't meet again until after January. So if we get the assessment. Well, well Mr. Deputy Mayor, I, I got to tell you, as I'm listening to all of this and all these, you know, and I know we've done this around other insurance pieces. Well, my as questions well. are brilliant. You can <laughs> go ahead and say <laughs> that's, that's what he was going to say. Deputy Mayor, that's your litigation. <laughs> he's our, he's our, he's, uh, I'm we're sorry. now naming the Deputy Mayor as our new GIF attorney, yes, but. Um, <laughs> But uh, but you know but I, but I also would note I know we've done this around other insurance pieces as well where the the juice hasn't been worth the squeeze in terms of even switching benefits and other pieces where we've had to redo with with uh, employees and all those other things it just isn't worth it and for the amount of money in the context of what we spend in this and the amount we've been paying out in these and, and costing us we know we know the GIF um, absolutely did look into some of this in terms of speaking with some other towns that have jumped to different ones and um, you know at least the the Again, not scientific study. I've gotten way more switching into the GIF we're in than going into the other GIF. Right? That's the that's the the piece that I see, and uh, that that con you know, not concerns me, but that's something I look at. Um, I, I just don't see the value in this. Uh, you know, with all of those things, you know, we're going to add another thing, another variable to the mix here at this time. I mean. Um, I, I, you know, I just don't see it. In fact, I, I'd be willing to move it so we we, uh, we vote it down and, and move on because for me, I don't I don't see the value in this given everything we have going on and what we know. And Mr. Mayor, I, I think in addition though to Mr. Burr's point, we're not going to have even the opportunity to get the assessment from the legal department. Our policy up is January 1st or December 31st, whatever date they use. We're not meeting again until January whatever, which is well after that. I just don't see logistically how we can get your, you can do something, an assessment, get that to us, and then we're going to somehow vote on it. I just don't see the timing. Yeah, because I'd also want you to call the attorney. I mean, you know, I'd want a little more meat than just the insurance right. side I, of it. I, I would expect the legal side of this right. that I've got. I would Absolutely. expect this assessment yeah. will take longer. It's going to take more than eight days till the end of the year, right? Or ten days. So, and we're in the holidays, so there's. That's where I was going. Yeah. With it. Thank Can you. I just and, ask? And their vacation days. What? Could I ask why wasn't it done though? Like, why are we here today? And we don't have any kind of memo or assessment. 
I, mean, I see the eyeballs looking at me. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know who to look at. But we, we don't I, have the I, information. I I, we need to I, make a decision. I, I received the phone call from, uh, actually from Joe, uh, just last week saying that this is coming up and that he wanted to sit down and talk about it because the time is tight. There was no uh, intentional omission on anyone's part. I think you know, it was coming to the end of the year and we tried to make the best of you know, decisions we can make and taking the experts' advice um, from what we had, as I said, um, from the risk manager, our financial advisor, and just going with what we had had in hand and that was the recommendation, the strong recommendation I'm asked from IMAC. So again, it was, uh, and you don't know what you don't know. Okay, this is the first time I was thrown into the deep end on this stuff. So I thought all the bases were covered. We got the information from the experts and I bought it here because it, the timeline was tight. But uh, going back to Garden State, I'm not married to either one. You know, I was just taking their advice and you've got the, the response that we're gonna stay with. Yeah. Uh, God, so, yeah, then, again, yeah. our job is to present all options, make exactly. sure that everyone understands it. Um, the timeline with these things just happens more towards the end of the year, especially on the, the PNC side. So I don't think we got the renewal. Well, well it sounds, we like, renewal it sounds numbers, like it's a, it's a three-year piece, and yes. uh, I'd say if, let's all flag that, you know, so yep. that uh, you know, whoever whatever that looks like is, is having a discussion yep. around like, data and those pieces. Yep. And I would absolutely say our legal department is included in it okay. in terms yeah. of – They've got to assess for us, sure. I think for a number of us up here, a yep. comfort level of what does that process of engaging attorneys look like? You know, what is yep. it? What does it mean in terms? You know, a lot you've heard yeah, yeah. from the from from others. Uh, I'm not going to beat the you know, but you get but we do appreciate the efforts that you undertook to, okay. to, to you know try to capture more savings for right. us. I don't want you to get the wrong message. No, no, no. I this is totally more understand. of the logistics and timing. Yeah. Thank you. We get it. If yeah. I just clarify, I, I think we're resolved. Um, well, I'm not sure we've even voted yet, but I, I think there's some sense of that. But um, to the extent that we would choose, if we're choosing by default, in a sense, not to change, is that for a three-year period? Yes. Okay. So, and again, it's the group that we're in the middle of litigation with. I mean, the only other point I was going to add, and it's maybe uh, over and above at this point, if you said that the one we're in is capitalized with 42 members and the other one's half of that, I wondered if that goes to those discretionary decisions of what they, you know, whether they cover for this or whether they, they don't have the same pool of money. They, they just... Probably so they, can't. They do have healthy surpluses, though. So that fund has about six million dollars in surpluses. Uh, the Garden State GIF, I think, is around a million, if I remember correctly, um, from the financial. So it's not like they don't have like they everything's sure. audited by the state of New Jersey. They're they're both really good funds. So sure. I'm not worried about you being in either fund in terms of a coverage perspective. Um, as far as how the claims would get paid, again. It's claims made for like the EPL and the um, public, public officials, officials liability policy. So if a claim was made and someone from the town knew about it and didn't report it by 1231, that could potentially be an issue. And that's one of the things that um, we spoke about with Brian as well. So, you know, if you were moving forward, we would want to make sure that everybody knows that everything has to be reported, even if it's just a one off conversation that you may have had. Um, so there is a there definitely is a potential for something like that to go wrong, but anything that's already been reported would be covered the same way through that GIF, and then anything new after January one would go on the other GIF. So, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate thank you. it. And no certainly, as we approach the holidays, what we did all hear from that is we need to hurry up and all file our lawsuits against each yeah. other. <laughs> yes. The, uh, yes. So thank you. Please, please, appreciate please do that, so. Guys. Thank you very much again for your. Thank efforts. you. We appreciate that, guys. Mr. Thank Mayor, you. real thank quick you. point of yeah. order. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Since I've just been informed that. Uh, the agreement with the GIF expires 12 31 22. I would make a motion to renew it. Yeah, I, I was going to make the I was going to make the same suggestion. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Excellent. Great uh, minds, Mr. Yeah. Burke. Great uh, minds. So moved. That's so, yes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So moved. And I second. Uh, question, concerns, comments. I think we have them ready, though. Uh, Madam Clerk. Councilor Cummings. No. Deputy Mayor Herlock. Yes. Councilor Price Abrams. Now I'm not clear what was before us. We're renewing with the current GIF. Oh, that we, we don't have to vote on the thing that was before us, the other one? It doesn't, we don't have to. We, we've, we've, okay. we didn't introduce, I didn't move it. <laughs> I so will I just move, yes, I, I support renewing the current GIF. Thank you. Councilor Russo? Yes. Councilor Schlager? Yes. Councilor Yacovellis? Yes. Mayor Spiller? Yes. 
Next is resolution R22280, which is a resolution awarding the contract, uh, a CDW Government LLC, um, for the renewal of the Cisco Smart Support Services Plan. Uh, and I so move. Second. It's moved and seconded. Any questions, concerns, comments? Seeing none, Madam Clerk. Councilor Cummings? Yes. Deputy Mayor Herlock? Yes. Councilor Price Abrams? Yes. Councilor Russo? Yes. Councilor Schlager? Yes. Councilor Yacobellis? Yes. Mayor Spiller? Uh, yes. Um, uh, let's see here. The next is Resolution R22281, which is approving items of revenue appropriation pursuant to NJSA 40A colon 4 87. I so move. Second. It's moved and seconded. Uh, any questions, concerns, comments? Seeing none, Madam Clerk. <coughs> Councilor Cummings? Yes. Deputy Mayor Herlock? Yes. Councilor Price Abrams? Yes. Councilor Russo? Yes. Councilor Schlager? Yes. Councilor Yacovellis? Yes. Mayor Spiller? Yes. Next is uh, let me make sure I get the right one. Uh, next is resolution R twenty two two eight uh, two eight two resolution authorizing the change order the contract uh, with K and D contractors for improvements the the fire station bathroom I so move second it's moved and seconded questions concerns comments seeing none Madam Clerk Councilor Cummings yes Deputy Mayor Herlock yes Councilor Price Abrams yes Councilor Russo yes Councilor Schlager yes Councilor Yacovellis yes Mayor Spiller yes <laughs> next is resolution R22283 which is a resolution authorizing the township to accept uh, accept and qualify responses to requests for qualifications for professional services for planning and community development I so move second it's been moved and seconded questions concerns or comments this is the one you had a question on Peter didn't you no no, community development. Thank you, though. Last number. Uh, uh, Madam Clerk? 30. Councilor Cummings? Yes. Deputy Mayor Herlock? Yes. Councilor Price Abrams? Yes. Councilor Russo? Yes. Councilor Schlager? Yes. Councilor Yacovellis? Yes. Mayor Spiller? Yes. Res next is resolution R22284, authorizing the award of professional services contract to McMahon and Scotland Bauman uh, for bond council. I so move. Second. Questions, concerns, comments? Madam Clerk? Councilor Cummings? Yes. Deputy Mayor Herlock? Yes. Councilor Price Abrams? Yes. Councilor Russo? Yes. Councilor Schlager? Yes. Councilor Yacovellis? Yes. Mayor Spiller? Yes. Next is resolution R22285, which is resolution authorizing the award of professional service contract to PKF uh, O'Connor Davies for the municipal audit services. And I so move. Second. Moved and seconded. Questions, concerns, comments? Seeing none, Madam Clerk? Councilor Cummings? Yes. Deputy Mayor Herlock? Yes. Councilor Price Abrams? Yes. Councilor Russo? Yes. Councilor Schlager? Yes. Councilor Yacobellis? No. Mayor Spiller? Uh, yes. Next is resolution R22286, resolution authorizing the 2023 Community Development Block Grant CDBJ applications, and I so move. Second. It's moved and seconded. Ms. Talley, would you please approach? And uh, Councilman Yacobellis, I believe you had a question. Sir. Thank you, Mayor. This is the one. Uh, Ms. Yes, thank you, uh, Councilor Russo. This was the one I had questions on. I just didn't understand. Uh, because I know we all had the ranking exercise. So what, what are we actually putting forward? Are we just putting forward how they were ranked? Yeah, the, the purpose of the tally sheets that you provided for me is to prioritize the projects. So it's not to evaluate the, uh, the amounts that were requested by each, each agency. That will be determined uh, when we get our allocation, the county comes up with a proposed allocation and they do use your prioritization as they consider the allocations. Um, and that's where we move. Okay, okay. thank you. Any other, yeah. any other questions, concerns, comments? Uh, just to clarify again, um, so we've got one of our projects, that's the top one, that's a town right. project. Okay. But the others are ranked based on the point system we gave, and the amounts are what they want, right? Not what, what we've changed. Right, they, quite often they don't get what they want. Right. But in terms of the ranking, we're saying, you know, these are our priorities. Exactly. Okay, I'm just trying to see, you know, well, it'll be up to the county ultimately to decide how much to give them. Yeah, the county has a pretty good familiarity with most of those service mm -hmm. organizations. And so I think that they're able to determine a reasonable amount for them to operate uh, in terms of what their proposals are. I was just concerned that that uh, that nice child center that has a, a boiler that's broken down. Not, they don't need the ninety-five thousand. They need the ninety-five hundred. They got a very low rank, so 
uh, I don't know, maybe they could still make it. We have a total of, what, 300000 is what we We get got. approximately that amount. So it may cover most. It yeah, for something like, like that, it might okay. cover the, right. the entire amount because that's they a capital project. They may be safe. Thank you. It's kind of hard to cut, up, cut yeah. down a capital project of that size. So I'd like to buy them that. 9500 yeah. From our capital. Any other questions, concerns, comments? Thank you, uh, Ms. Sally. Uh, Madam Clerk. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Mayor, I don't have a move-in and a second. Uh, I moved it. Okay. Who's and who seconded? I think the Deputy Mayor. Thank you. I appreciate mm -hmm. that. No Councilor problem. Cummings? Yes. Deputy Mayor Herlock? Yes. Councilor Price Abrams? Yes. Councilor Russo? Yes. Councilor Schlager? Yes. Councilor Iacobellis? Yes. Mayor Spiller? Yes. Thank Next you. is resolution R22287, which is a resolution to confirm and ratify the professional services contract for the O'Toole services payment. Uh, in the amount of $39,386, and I so move. I have a question. I've uh, got to be seconded Second. first. Oh, sorry. Uh, moved Second. and seconded. Okay. Questions, concerns, comments? Uh, Councilwoman okay. Schlager. Can somebody please explain to me, because I, I don't remember, or what a, um, a non-fair and open professional service contract is, the definition of that? That's when a contract is not offered out to public bid. So normal in certain circumstances, when contracts meet a certain bid threshold, go over a certain bid threshold, they have to go out for public bid. This is not that situation. Most of the time, we don't put things out to public. I shouldn't say most of the times. There are occasions where contracts don't go out to public bid. Are you saying most of the time it does? No, no. I'm saying on occasion, or, or there are occasions when it doesn't, and there are occasions when it does. I don't okay. know. I can't speculate as to the percentages of times when it does, but thank you. Any other questions, concerns, comments? Uh, no. I just, um, um, I want to be on a record that I was uncomfortable with this hire, and um, I thought that it could have been done better, and the result, I uh, think, is speaks for itself. Any other questions, concerns, comments? And I'll just note uh, the key pieces. We do, you know, not know the results of any actions prior, prior, and the point of, you know, we would not pay someone, uh, for the record note, we, we don't pay for a result we would want, so we just want to be clear uh, for that specifically. Uh, Madam Clerk. Councilor Cummings? No. Deputy Mayor Herlock? Abstain. Councilor Price Abrams? Yes. Councilor Russo? Abstain. Councilor Schlager? Abstain. Councilor Iacobellis? No. Mayor Spiller? Yes. Next is resolution um, two, 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 a lot of twos there, 22288. Uh, Councilwoman Schlager, would you mm -hmm. do the honors? Thank you. Um, whereas invoices against the Township of Montclair in favor of the following persons for the amount set opposite their respective names have been received, duly audited, and found correct. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the Township of Montclair, the County of Essex, that said invoices B, and they are hereby ordered paid, and that checks be drawn by the Finance Department to the order of such persons for the amounts respectively here and after stated on the computer printout attached here to and made a part here of this bill list is dated December 20th. 2022 for $9,080,558.01. And I so move. Second. Move the second. Any questions, concerns, comments? Just one comment, Mayor. Please. Uh, Madam Clerk, if you could have the record show, I, I want to, I know we only vote on this whole thing in one fell swoop, but I, I would be voting against PO 2242742, the settlement um agreement for four hundred and twenty five thousand dollars which had to do with the decozen lot next to the police station i voted against that resolution uh when it came up a few weeks ago uh, and i just want to make sure to vote against it on the bill list as well i don't know how we do that but at least just make a note in the in the record or now that's noted because of my comments any other questions concerns or comments on the bill list yeah i, I mr mayor if i may i, I don't know how that works my clerk but i've voted against that issue every time it came up. So I would be in the same boat as Councilor Iacobellis. I don't know how you would do that on a bill list, though, quite frankly. But I, I wouldn't be in favor of that payment either. Same for me. I voted no. Mayor, yeah. if I may. Yeah. 
I'm going to ask our legal counsel, this is a resolution, are we being asked to amend it by striking some of the purchase orders? And then we... Uh, you're, you're not in the sense of you're hearing either no's or abstains on a certain item in it, because we're not asking to be stri stricken. If there's, if there's enough support for it to move forward, it wouldn't be stricken. Okay. Can Correct. I make a motion to amend to remove that PL? Well, the motion can be made to amend the, P, the, the PO, yes, or the bills list, yes. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to amend this resolution to remove PO 2202742 uh, for $425,000. Second. It's been moved and seconded, uh, and you'd like it moved to vote on it separately. Correct. correct? Okay. Yes, ma'am. So, mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, Councilwoman Price Abrams. So I want to understand if we're removing it. This is something that we have previously taken an action by this body to pay. Right. So I, I, I just want to understand if we could be doing something at this time that would be the undoing of a settlement that we agreed to and we need to pay. So I, I feel like we have to be consistent with our Mr. own. Mr. Burr, probably body. you guys and Mr. I'm sorry. I don't know what no, the no, no, was no, 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 I got it. There's always stuff going. But uh, the councilwoman's question. Right, if we've already, this body has already voted to approve this, right, and enter it. Um, this is a, you're right, in some ways, a, a, um, what's the right word? But you know what I mean? It's a. Well, it's, it's the a, execution of our will. We yeah, previously yeah. voted on Under, this matter. Understood, understood. It's being. Majority approved it, yeah. Majority approved it. I just it, so. don't know where we are. You know, I, I, I will say, just noting, there, there are always items that some of us vote no on, and we usually do not pull them out of the bill list just because we were on one side of the vote, just a note. Uh, we just. Approve them. You know, if it's a settlement agreement or anything else, we, we don't uh, say I voted yes on this one or no on that one. We we get that's our opportunity to to note that during the vote on that issue, but then paying the bill, you know, we pay the bill. Just a, just a note on that. Okay, yeah. but the motion is to pull it out, right? That's the motion. Yeah, You've asked your question, um, you know. But it, Mr. Burr, I don't know if there's a specific answer to that, and make sure your microphone's on, please. But um, you know. I don't know well, if they had a question in that really. Ca you know, <laughs> council, councilwoman. <laughs> point is well taken, but uh, there's a reason why the body has to appro approve and adopt this bills list. And if there's a dispute or a problem or an issue with it, the body can move to amend the bills list. And it will, it could it present the problem down, down the line because we've entered into a contract and agreed to pay for these services? Sure, but um, I don't think that precludes the body from amending the bills list. My motion is to separate. The, the item out of the bill list to vote on it separately. Okay. Any others? Yeah. Any other questions, concerns, comments on the motion? This has to deal with the decosin line, right? Mm -hmm. And the settlement right. that we agreed to, in which there was a okay, not all of us, but, but there was a concern of what the result would be if we did not settle, that the price would be significantly higher is that correct uh, yeah, yeah I mean I can't I can't uh, it, it was it, it was presented to us we heard the legal arguments uh, a lot of debate everyone can have their positions we voted on it I'll just leave it at uh, but, I, but this was like from a while ago when these numbers was put in front of us yes and there was if you remember there were dollars actually set aside for this but there was right. a differential in that amount and that this was the vote on the differential in that amount of what the, right the total settlement yeah. this is the so now if we do not pay this, then what is, where, where are we then? Mr. Burr, I'd probably ask you this. Maybe it applies to all of the things that we've uh, right. previously done, right? When you get to a bill list, if, it's, if something's not paid on services that obviously have been rendered or an agreement that has been to come to, or all, you know, all right. put in the back, if there's a, there's a vote, I'm not saying we, any of us is prejudging what it would be here, but if there's a vote to not pay something, what happens uh, next? Well, with this one particular, and with the well, the Dukosian one, was the Serena yeah. one, the ag agreement was made, and actually, it's not even just an agreement; it's a court order. It's a court order. It's a consent order by the court that the township uh, has been required to pay this amount uh, and deposit it into the court. Into court, if it's the four hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars we're talking about. If the township does not pay it, uh, one, we'd be in violation of a 
consent order. Uh, there could be ramifications from that, i.e. Uh, sanctions by the court. Um, the agreement could fall apart. Um, the, we could be liable for legal fees to the uh, defendant's counsel. Um, very substantial damages for not following through with that. So um, that would be on that matter in particular. And any other bill that was a legitimate bill that the township, uh, for services that the township agreed to contract for, and there was no discrepancy in the bill and the services were rendered, we could be looking at litigation. And again, the township could suffer substantial consequences and damages for not fulfilling its obligation under the contract. Okay, so I'm a, I'm a third grader now. <laughs> okay. So if we take this out and we're going to vote on it at a separate time, that's what Mr. Jacob. That's what this said. motion would do. Right. So when do we vote on that? Immediately after this. After this particular conversation. Immediately. Uh, well, we vote on the motion. It's the same. Okay, that's all I want to know. We'd vote on the motion to remove. Right. If it's been removed, we'd vote on what then remains. We, then we come back. And to then it. we'd come back. I would make a motion to vote right. on that, and then we would vote on that. Okay. Right. That's that's this motion. If if the motion passes, yeah. if it fails, this remains as part of the the bill right. list, and it would be voted on in totality. In hmm? Awesome. Uh, Councilwoman Price Abrams. So I guess I'd like to understand from my colleagues what is the purpose of removing it from this list if we're going to vote on it next? Because we still, I, I think there's, we're putting our, the township in different kind of jeopardy that we don't need to be in to, to not follow through on something we already committed to by our own action. So I just want to understand what is the goal of pulling it out, if I may ask. To just be able to take a separate vote on that one line item versus the whole bill list. Because we either have to vote for the whole bill list in its entirety, yes or no. So I'm asking that we take that one item out so that everybody can vote how they'd like to on that one item and then vote separately on the full bullet, uh, bill list. Which in, in practical terms means I would imagine some do want to vote no on that. Just, right, that's the right. answer. Yeah, just, that's what it is. Just for, you know, the record. Okay. That's all. But understand, right? Everyone here? Yeah. Well, good. Any other questions, concerns, comments on the... Sorry. I didn't mean, no, no, no. Go ahead, Mr. Mayor. I didn't mean no, to. No, no, no. I was just saying sense. it does sounds like you're looking for just a Just one, one yeah, point of clarification, and I just want to make sure I'm right because this has been a long process on this particular piece of property. This is the lot across from the police station that she's not here anymore, but former Councilwoman Baskerville and I voted no back in 14. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's a while. It's a, long time yeah, a while ago. Yeah, we'll leave it at that. I just yeah. wanted to clarify. No, no, no. <laughs> just to clarify. So thank you, okay. thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Nineteen twenty. All right. So it's been uh, it's been moved and seconded. Seeing any other debate, discussion, comment. Uh, this is the motion to remove the one item. Madam Clerk, call the roll. Councilor Cummings. No. Deputy Mayor Harlock. Yes. Councilor Price Abrams. Abstain. Councilor Russo. Yes. Councilor Schlager. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little confused. He still gets a vote this, for it either way. This, okay. yeah. <laughs> yes. Right. Councilor Yacobellis? Yes. Mayor Spiller? I abstain. So we, we now have the bill list before us with this item removed. Any other questions, concerns, comments on the bill list? Seeing none. Madam Clerk? We just like giving you more paperwork to do. <laughs> yeah. Like so. I'm sorry. So this is a motion yeah. on the bill list with that as amended one. with one item. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Cummings? Yes. Deputy Mayor Herlock? Yes. Councilor Price Abrams? Yes. Councilor Russo? Yes. Councilor Schlager? Yes. Councilor Yacobellis? Yes. Mayor Spiller? Yes. Thank you. Next is that item. So I move uh, separately. We can call it uh, resolution R22-2. What are we up to? Well, I have quite a few added. You have to anyway? All right. So whatever <laughs> resolution number is appropriate uh, to, to um, uh, pay, that settle, pay, the, pay the settlement amount uh, that was noted before. Okay. That, and I so move. Second. Okay. Is it moved and seconded? And any questions, concerns, comments on that? Seeing none, panel clerk. Okay, so this is to pay or not to pay? <laughs> this, this is, <laughs> well, all, that is the all, all, all of them to pay or not to pay, right, the other okay. one the full bill list, but this is to pay or not to pay that one item, which was part of the settlement agreement. Yes. Yep, okay, everyone good on what that is? Uh, Madam Clerk. Councilor Cummings? Yes. Deputy Mayor Herlock? No. Councilor Price Abrams? Yes. 
Councilor Russo? No. Councilor Schlager? Yes. Councilor Yacobelis? No. Mayor Spiller? Yes. Okay. Uh, next is, uh, let's see, resolution. Anybody have an objection if I move these in bulk? Anybody have an objection? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah. Which ones? <laughs> separate, separate. I have to pull out, I'd like to pull up. I'd like to amend item number uh, 34. Oh. R twenty two two nine zero. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. We uh, so that yes, please let's let's look for your amend and then might just move. Uh, right, go ahead. So my amendment would be to change uh, March thirty first, twenty twenty three, to December thirty first, twenty twenty three. So December twenty first, December thirty first, twenty twenty three. Any object? Any objection to the modification? Any objection? No. Hearing no objection. That was the one. Uh, so it's to extend that to 2023 for item number 34, correct? December 31st. Correct. December 31st. Resolution R22290, item 34, amending the ending date from March 31st, 2023 to December 31st, 2023. Excellent. Okay. Uh, if there is an objection, I'm going to move items 33 through 38. That leaves the last one. Items 33 through 38, which are appointments in bulk. Is there any objection? Any no, objection? But I, I'm sorry mm -hmm. to, um, it just hit me that I want to make sure that I'm clear on something. Mm -hmm. And that goes back to, um, and I, 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 do, I do apologize for this, uh, the O'Toole vote. Uh, let's come back to that if you don't mind, because I move this right now as a, okay. as a bulk. And we can All go right. back to, you know, anything you want, but let's uh, right, just to remain clear. to the motion. The motion is to 33 through 38. I haven't heard objection to my motion. No right. objection. No objection, objection to my motion, so I move I move those items. Uh, Madam uh, Clerk, if you'd call the roll on that. Councilor Cummings? Yes. Deputy Mayor Herlock? Yes. Councilor Price Abrams? Yes, with the amended piece. Thank you. you got Councilor that. Russo? Stain. Councilor Schlager? Yes. Councilor Yacobellis? Yes. Mayor Spiller? Yes. Um, let's do the last one. And we'll go back to a any, any, uh, question. Councilman Cummings have. Let's do the last yeah, one here. So I, or you want to go back now? We'll, yeah, let's go back. Yep. It's just a real quick one for two 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 eight seven. I want to be sure that I counted this. And so essentially, sorry, which item is it on there? Uh, two. Which number here? Our, oh, thirty one. So essentially, that that failed. So. Mr. Uh, Mr. Burr, looking at that one, did that item fail, or, or how does that work on Because I got it at 223. Yeah, I, I, I'm not, I didn't get the, I didn't get how many abstentions there were when I was tallying it. Uh, can you turn your microphone on? Uh, Sorry, I didn't get how many abstentions. I'm going to ask the clerk to, to read back that tally. Mayor. Please. Mm -hmm. Councilor Cummings, no. Deputy Mayor Herlock, abstain. Councilor Price Abrams, yes. Councilor Russo, abstain. Councilor Schlager, abstain. Councilor Yacobellis, no. Mayor Spiller, yes. It failed. Okay. I just wanted to. Well, then I don't know why we made an obligation, but okay. Well, so what's what that? We do? I'm noting that we. That microphone, please. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, Mr. Burr, I assume it's the same answer on not paying a bill yeah, that we've incurred. Yeah, uh, it will be the same answer. Yeah. Uh, it will be up to the uh, vendor to decide how they want to proceed. Okay. Uh, next is resolution uh, R22295, which is a resolution authorizing the execution of a professional uh, agreement uh, with CME Associates to prepare a traffic study for the Lackawanna Plaza and redevelopment plan. Uh, in this case, I so move. It's been, um, it's been moved, and is there a, is there a, I have a, su a suggested modification for please. discussion, Mayor. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, can you pass that down while you do that? Yeah, thanks. There are th there are three places where the where CME Associates uh, is contained in the resolution. I would strike CME Associates and replace it with Bright View Engineering. Um, I know Ms. Talley is here to speak to the different bids we received, and I think we all received a copy of the Bright View Engineering report. Um, it would be my preference that we select Bright View Engineering for the traffic and engineering uh, for the traffic and circulation study uh, for Lackawanna Plaza, um, no notably because they can meet the timeline that we're working on and they can accomplish the same results as CME uh, six weeks earlier uh, than CME was able to. 
Um, so it would be my recommendation to move forward with them. And I believe, uh, if Ms. Talley, if you can speak to the credibility to the, um, you know, who they do work with in the town versus uh, CME versus the other uh, bidder, just a little bit of context for the group would be helpful, I think. Sure. We received proposals from three qualified traffic engineering firms. Um, Brightview uh, is a local uh, engineering firm based out of Livingston. They do do work for the planning board, um, but they are well qualified. Basically, their specialty is traffic engineering. So um, I think you'll be well served by a contract with them. Uh, and they did commit to doing this study and having it done by February 4th. Uh, I spoke to the engineer today because I did touch base with all of the um, uh, experts and they said that they've already got dates set up to confirm tomorrow if they get appointed to start with the counts in January. And then do we have the opportunity to, if we wanted to later add any additional intersections? Absolutely. Um, and my suggestion is that let's see what happens when we get the first traffic counts because the process um, will be, they'll, they'll generate the traffic from the proposal, the proposed development at Lackawanna Plaza. Then they'll distribute that traffic uh, on the local network. Then they'll compare that to the traffic counts. And I think when they start the process, they'll identify, because we have a grid network, and they'll be able to determine where the, the traffic's going. And at that point, we'll be able to figure out exactly um, beyond what the scope of this is right now, exactly where we need to do some additional traffic counts. And we can, we can amend the contract to include areas where, it, where it's necessary. Uh, thank and it you. may be. And, and could, um, could I propose also if Councillor Cummings and I could potentially meet with you and them and-, and uh, I sorry, don't, I, listen. Bright view to, to make suggestions around possible, because my, my concern, my understanding is, I don't want us looking at a map and deciding, we have got a lot of intersections on here. I don't want, want us to just pick on a map what we think what else should be added in addition to what's on here. I'd rather them spend some time looking at the area and come back to us as well with a recommendation and say, in order to get a comprehensive look, in order to get a real assessment of the impact of this redevelopment plan, we also are recommending that you add intersections X, Y, and Z, and that we have the opportunity to cross-check that with the feedback that I know he's, the gentleman's received and that I've received as well uh, in terms of the intersections that constituents have asked us to include. So as a meeting, I'm assuming that that would be appropriate. Absolutely. Okay. So I, um, <laughs> I took a class today, and it was three pillars to it called access, accuracy, and analysis. It's about how to use data. And when you don't do those things correct, you end up with bad data, which can lead to bad decisions. And my issue here has been this process, because today, I received an email that knew Ms. Talley had actually recommended Boswell. And then within about a half hour, you then shared an email in which you said that the mayor indicated that you and met with and then changed it to CME. And now I get here and I get a proposal from Brightview which really kind of throws me off because A, you are the professional here. Your recommendation was Boswell. That was changed to CME. And now you're coming for us and telling us that Brightview is, is this your decision? Are you telling me that you think Brightview is the best to do this? I think what my recommendation is they're all qualified. They all can do the work. My concern was with, with, with CME has all along been that they can't do it within the time frame. Okay. So I think I, I laid out to you the issues and rec uh, with each of the firms. I shared that with you. My initial recommendation was to go with Boswell, um, but we had some subsequent discussions and it was not just with the mayor it was the consensus uh, i'm just direct. going based on communications that i received today and 
in those communications, A, Brightview is the most expensive. B, first you told me that the issue with, with uh, Boswell and Brightview was that they had connections to the planning board, yes. and CME mm -hmm. was the one that was independent. That's correct. We went into this, you went into this, knowing that the council made it clear we wanted an independent study, an independent firm brought on for this. So right there, it's like conflicting. And so I'm trying to really go back to CME said they were not, these are all conversations. So CME said they couldn't deliver this until March 14th. Right. Brightview and Boswell both said February 4th. But as of, of roughly 420 yesterday, CME was who we wanted to go with, even though they were the probably the ones that, went, that would take the longest time, which, again, my, one of my fears is that it seems this council, particularly the EDC, is interested more in limiting counts or location to move this along out of fear that if we did do a wider inspection, it would show us that this development is, simple, is really too big. And so I want to make sure that who we hire is independent and good and so and no attachments to the township. I've said that. It could be you guys can vote yes and overvote me all you want, but my, what I'm saying is this council needs to know the process here in which yesterday, matter of fact, today, Boswell was, CME was recommended. Yesterday, Boswell was recommended. Now today, Brightview was recommended. All three are capable, but at the end of the day, what was the question? Who did you feel was the top one? You recommended Boswell. That's what you recommended. And so why the change? Uh, the direction I received through the three members of the Economic Development Committee was to proceed with, CM, with CME. So ultimately, that was the resolution that went to the council for tonight's meeting. Okay, so the, this is just ridiculous. But so then my question then goes to, does any of these firms do business with the council or have any business with the township of the three firms that we looked at from the beginning? Well, to my knowledge, I know that um, both Boswell and Brightview do work for the planning board. So that eliminates them being independent. Right, and that's why I said CME, who has, to my knowledge, does not do a contract right now, does not do work for the township. Um, was meets the criteria of being entirely independent. However, my concern was that they couldn't complete the project until March 14th. So CME also has, the CME has no contracts or does no business with the township. I know to, I don't know if they have other contracts with other departments. I didn't do that. I didn't do that analysis. To my knowledge, they're not working uh, as the township engineer, and they're not working on an, any of the projects associated with the planning board. Okay. We did, um, we did pass a resolution tonight that named them, though, as a preferred vendor uh, for the township. Actually named all three. I'm just looking for yeah, it. I'm, saying, I'm, I'm, I'm talking previously. Yeah, before that's the this. list of pre-qualified consultants that we got when yeah, we did I, the RFP. I think previously it was that they had done work, that all three had done work with the township historically. Just It was, it was so whether none it was of them were independent. My, my concern was could we alter no, this? No, I, I get, I'm just saying, my... Yeah, I just want to be back to the facts of what we have determined, what we've said we right. were going to do. And it's a, it's so a, I'm talking to Janice. Okay, so fine. the three <laughs> firms that were presented to us, none of them, all three of them had business with the township? I'm not aware of the nature of the contract if CME has with the township. If, I'm, if somebody tells me that they do, then, then, then that's a fact. I didn't look into whether or not they have a past contract or a current contract with another department. But you will say that before we started this, we said that we wanted an independent firm. Right. Okay. So, as we had discussed earlier, I did make suggestions on the fact that the streets that we were looking at, 
um, I'm assuming now what you're offering, Mr. Yacobellis, is that we can go back and look at this and, and extend the streets that we currently have. Because when the other thing that I was told when I asked that we also include Walnut Street up to with including South Willow, Greenwood Avenue, and Forest Street, you said that the EDC that they recommended, they didn't recommend, they recommended we stop at Claremont and not include Walnut. That's correct. Okay, so now my request is that we do extend that to Walnut, but we also consider the south of Bloomfield Avenue as well. So we can go into this all tonight, but I know Deputy Mayor Herlock likes to get out of here by 10. So I would suggest, I will be into having a conversation with you, Peter, to look into where this traffic study and who it is. But I will, you know, I'm not comfortable with the process. I think it needs to be done a little bit more open and transparent and that we really follow what we said we were going to do from the beginning. And so we had an email exchange earlier today. As I explained, you know how I feel. And I think that um, this is not too surprising. Thank you very much, Councilman uh, Specific, and uh, certainly my colleagues on EDC can speak to it as well. Uh, we have had extensive conversations on this, and for the members of the public, um, as we look at this, there's multiple competing pieces that we have trying to go together, and Janice, we appreciate you helping us with it. Um, those are to get information as quickly as possible, um, thorough information, uh, to also balance the independence, quote-unquote independence I'll use, because as you always note, these these entities are, in, are always independent from us, and we engage with them right. for whatever else, right? But they're independent. Um, but the perception of such, uh, cost, and everything else, uh, Councilman's correct. Uh, the EDC uh, is appropriately doing its due diligence and did do its due diligence. Uh, when we had the three uh, entities that responded, and uh, thank you, Councilwoman Schlager, you noted it at the time. You said there are two that you think have done some work specifically. Um, she flagged that, and we said in an effort to be as uh, uh, independent, if you want to call it that, as possible. Let's look at CME. My specific charge, uh, while I agreed, and we all agreed uh, unanimously, was to for you to have a conversation with CME to see if they could do that work and do it expeditiously. You know, their time frame compared to everyone else was way off. Um, that, that's exactly how the conversation went, I believe. You said you would inform the EDC today if that could be uh, shortened in any way and they could do the work that the others could do. Uh, you came back to EDC today saying that could not be the case. Is that correct? That's Once correct. That they, they said they, they would could, try. They right? could right. try, but right. they would not commit to anything Which we know is not DMs. counted as try. Uh, you know, good enough, not good enough. Right. We've got to go by what they say then. Uh, EDC had a full debate and discussion around uh, the secondary piece that everyone's talking about here is making sure people have the information in a timely manner to act. Um, therefore, EDC felt that that outweighed. Uh, to find a timely manner, EDC further looked at it instead of the two remaining, the one that would be considered most air quotes, independent, right, if, if we're doing that, is the one that's being suggested tonight. Um, that's where that was developed. And certainly, as the Councilman Yacobellis is noting today, also said uh, we should look at the experts, meaning them, to determine what streets are part of that uh, study. I believe that's the full conversations that we've had uh, doing the charge of the EDC, which is appropriate and, uh, I would argue, thorough and exactly what we should be doing. Um, so uh, that's the process that got us to this point. I thank both my colleagues for engaging in all of that. Um, and we, uh, again, moving forward to this. And Janice, we thank you for juggling all the different pieces that we pushed and said we're trying to balance. Okay. So appreciate it. So I just want to be clear. Receiving something at 6 o'clock tonight is not a timely manner. And I, as soon as Councilman Russo saw it, he's like, what is this? So to say that it was a timely manner I don't think is true or correct. And I think if we're going to move forward on this, we need to do a better job of communicating with everyone what decisions are to be made. Because the email exchange that I received today showed that basically this was done today after Mrs. Janice Talley recommended one firm that was turned down. Those are the facts. I think I just described exactly what happened today and all of those pieces as I just described yeah. all happened today and over the last couple of days, right? Yeah. yeah. So it did, it did happen exactly today. And we asked Ms. Talley to try and get something for this meeting, and we know it was tight, but you got us something. Uh, I believe uh, last conversation was, was uh, hours before this meeting. Uh, so we do appreciate that uh, and, your, and your efforts. And to work to see if CME could do it in a, you know, a more consistent manner with the other um, uh, others that, that put in, 
but unfortunately they could not guarantee that uh, at this time uh, anyway so with that we have uh, a motion that is moved forward and amended the amendment has been put forward um, uh, it is to uh, move Brightview Engineering to do the study and Madam Clerk I will ask you to, uh, yep. questions concerns comments uh, Councilwoman Price Abrams so I, I do want to just revisit, and, and I know that the members of the public and Council Cummings and, and others, you know, would want to, to know that this would be an independent entity. And to the extent that they are not, I, I think Ms. Talley just addressed it, but I just really want to be clear that um, what we mean by independent and, and whoever wants to opine on how we consider them. They're not working for us currently. They, they aren't involved in this product in any way. They. I, I'm offering what little kind of elaboration I'm asking for from people who know better, but I want, I want to be on the record about how we view them as independent so that we can address that with the people who have been calling for it and who have that as a, a legitimate concern. Well, they so do I'm, work. That's a, I'm asking for whoever knows about them to, to say more. Well, they do work for us. We do use them, CME. But, they're but, the they, but I think it's very important. They don't work for the planning board, right? Or yes, you're saying they, they do? do. They Look at Ms. Halley. She's saying they come back. Gary hold uses them. Hold on, hold on one second. We, we are, you're talking about the I one just, being recommended, which is not CME, Brightview, correct? Brightview, correct. the one you're recommending. So I just want to understand what we understand to be any. Right, I heard a few different things there. That's why I'm Good. clarifying. So the one that is being recommended, um, Ms. Talley, can you speak again to uh, their current role? They serve as the consultant to the planning board on uh, traffic engineering issues. That's what I said. Thank you. And I think I'm going to repeat again because I think it's very important that we know the process here. And that's as of 4 o'clock, CME was this, as of last week, Boswell was the recommendation. 4 o'clock, CME was the recommendation. 6 o'clock, Brightview. That is not the right process that we should be doing things. Can, can I just, at this moment in time today, December 20th, Bos, Boswell is the planning board's uh, um, engineer, right? They're I, the planning board engineer right now. Right, ex at this moment. I, don't, I believe their contract might be up. Their contract's and, up. We haven't, the, the planning board hasn't right. made a decision. They're interviewing right. firms, including Boswell. That's right, okay. But at this year. moment in time, so Boswell to me was always off the table because yeah. we have a current working contract with them. At this moment in time, we do, do we have a working contract with CME or Brightview? We do have a contract with Brightview because they, are, they have a contract with the planning board to work as the, tra as the traffic engineer. Okay. On basically, they review applications. Okay. And to, to, to the points of others, I, I'm sure none of us have in front of us what it would be, but we do work, whether it's our, I, well, as I noted this, starting this uh, utility work, others, I don't think CME has okay. done any of that yet, but okay. I do believe Gary is adding them, which is why we voted on it today, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to the approved list to expand the number of individuals that can okay. do work. So I do not believe actually they have done any work for us previously, but uh, they're being added to the list, so we have more and more individuals okay. that, as we note with the water main breaks, that we have multiple firms that can do that work, so we do applaud him for doing that. Um, but as you note, and as the councilwoman's noting, mm -hmm. uh, when you did make that recommendation, and, and I started this with saying thank you, Councilwoman mm -hmm. Schlager, for flagging, her immediate point was that that one seems too close. It does. Um, so we appreciated your right. recommendation, but as the EDC, our, our prerogative was to say, well, we want more independence, or at least the perception of independence. Right. Uh, hence the additional recommendations and modifications. CME, although you reached out to them to see if their time frame could be right. done uh, in a more expeditious manner, today you did that. Uh, you informed us of that a couple hours before the meeting. That could not be the case. Uh, and as we had all discussed, mm -hmm. saying if right. that was possible to you to get it done quicker, <coughs> stick with CME. If not, it would be to switch. When you determined that they could not, they answered the, right. the recommendation okay. is moved to switch. And that's the process. Yeah. Ms. Tally, I just want to know before you go to bed tonight, or maybe tomorrow, I, I just want to know if CME done any work with the township before this, before today. Actually, they have. Okay, so they've had previous contact. Thank yes. you. Yes, it was, to my knowledge, it was uh, five years ago, but that was the last time I. That's the last time they worked with I, us. They worked with us. Which yeah. was this? Which firm? I'm sorry. That was CME. 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 Okay. So when you put out the RFP, RFQ, so it was an RFQ. An RFQ. These were the three. We had 
it was an RFQ for all positions. Yeah. And for traffic engineer, we received four proposals. Okay. One of which was was Naglia, which 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 we, clearly, which we wouldn't be able to clearly. Right, yeah. Right. Okay. So, so of the three, so weighing all the three, we we kind of we have. Um, a, a relationship somewhat with all three a tiny bit but the timeline our timing is is what is important here so this right. is of all the people that we have relationships with this is the least one I would assume and meets the timeline so I, I that's how that. I view yeah I it. can understand your position yeah it's so. If I may. Okay. Uh, well, I'll ask Last, if it okay. is Jermaine, because we've, I think, gone right about this. So. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, okay, so, uh, yep, go ahead. Well, and that's to say that, I mean, I, I think it's important to understand that Neglia is the one that is very clearly in, you know, that would be a, something of a conflict. That's the one who is our, if it's an engineer of record or whoever we describe it, that's our township engineer. It's an outside firm, but that's our in-house. They would be not independent, but I really do think anybody else that meets the qualifications does not have... They, they can be independent because they are not working for the town. If they, it, it, but, I'm, but I'm Boswell does. With but your I, I believe Boswell does because we they're the planning board's engineers. So therefore, so I'm, I'm took, saying Brightview. So between Brightview and CME, I think Brightview can meet the deadline. So that's the. But in other words, having done me, anecdotal yeah. work for us, I don't think it's the same as being our our engineer that's, of record or the exactly. planning board's I engineer would, of, I would in that way. That, and yes. that's what I wanted to just. Flesh out. And right. appreciate everyone can have their thoughts yeah. on that. I, I just wanted to ask: Was cost of, of any consequence here? Because the CME was eighty-eight thousand, if I remember correctly, reading today. Then I see this is one hundred sixteen, quite a bit more. Did we have any kind of a budget issue to, to look at? I mean, we didn't have to take the lowest. Right. You don't have to t take the lowest. Um, so. Yes. But Brightview, Brightbart, is it Brightbart? A oh, Brightview yeah. right. is clear. <laughs> Brightview is clearly the highest. Right? It's that, that, a that's base. a fact, yes. Yeah. yes. But those costs is potentially be passed on to the developer. Well, but okay. But I so think I want to... You're correct. This conversation about the timeline, that's what I meant earlier about access and Dallin analysis. We need to get this right. So this timeline conversation, we don't need to rush this. We need to get it right. And I think there's a... It's just some kind of like push to do this quickly. And so I'm just going to keep harping on that. Any other questions, concerns, comments? Seeing none, Madam Clerk. I'm sorry, Mayor. This is the roll call for the amendment. This is the roll strike. call. Uh, it was it was amend in substitute with it. You know, I, I moved knowing he he substitute with amendment. So this is a substitute amendment. So this will be the actual vote. So okay. it's it's been substitute. If we vote yes on it, it's the vote. I got it. Okay. Thank so. you, Mayor. Just point of clarification, yeah. Ms. Mayor. I apologize. Mm -hmm. What exactly are we voting on again? I, I understand there's been substitutes and amendments. It's 10 after 10. I'm tired. <laughs> There's been a lot of discussion. Uh, <laughs> I tried. I tried. So we, we, we have to start calling him Cinderella. Oh, yes, I'll clarify. Seriously. Uh, I need know. my beauty sleep, Mr. Mayor. So I'll Can clarify that. I made a motion to substitute Brightview for CME Associates in item number 39, R22-295. Okay. Thank, thank you, Mr. Yakubos. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. And that's, that's the vote now, which will be the it's motion with substitute. It was a substitution. Uh, amendment by substitution, so this is the vote. If we vote on this, we would not go back to a, like a main motion. Yes. This was substituted. Uh, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Councilor Cummings? No. Deputy Mayor Herlock? Yes. Councilor Price Abrams? Yes. Councilor Russo? No. Councilor Schlager? Yes. Councilor Yacobellis? Yes. Mayor Spiller? Yes. Uh, those ones. Uh, Councilwoman uh, Price Abrams, did you have a motion? Uh, <laughs> you, you did. You said you were looking for the um, culture and climate uh, move, I which is to move. If we have something here. Mayor, I do have another item. Yep. Um, if I can please revisit my vote on item, item number 20, resolution R22276 uh, with Eric Bernstein and Associates, I would like to change my vote to no. Which one is this thing? Good catch by me. I, I, uh, R22276, item number 20. Yes, I would, I would like to do the same, to change my vote to no. I know. 
I had to, okay. It's been, it's been, uh, it's an I don't know how that. Conflict. They have to say no, it's yeah. his conflict. Oh, okay. So, Councilman, are you abstaining or you moving? Are you recusing, maybe? Recu are you voting no on this? Recusing. Well, we'll let him answer, but what are, you, what are you doing on this? I was just going to change my vote to no, but if I can, okay. uh, if I can, well, I can't recuse myself because I was already here for the discussion and didn't leave the room, so I would change it to an abstention. So if you could change my vote on item 20, R22276 to, from yes to abstention. Thank you. And I'm no. And I'm not giving you legal advice. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. And okay. Madam Clerk, I'm a no. You got me as a no, right? Okay, and everybody try and, you know, <laughs> just <laughs> mindful of your votes when you're voting on it. Um, so Mr. Mayor, that, there's, there's one more, just to, I don't want to interrupt. And I've got one, too. I'll move. Yeah, yeah I, I apologize. And I defer to um, uh, Mr. Burr, Ms. DeVito, and Mr. Scandalbury. I believe Mr. Santarcangelo's appointment is coming up at the end of the year, too, with the work that he's doing. And he has some court dates coming up in January that I'm aware of. So we should probably, uh, Mr. Mayor, with your... Yep. I'll, uh, would you so move? I'll, I'll move it. It's moved and se I'll second. Thank moved you. and seconded. I believe you've spoken to it. But any other questions, concerns, comments on the motion? Does it require a roll call? Did you get? Did you get that, Madam Clerk? Is this a resolution f approving the agreement with Jason Santarcangelo for the year 2023? That is correct. Okay. Then yes, I have it. Okay. So it's been moved. Uh, it's been seconded. Any questions, concerns, comments? Seeing no additional questions, concerns, comments, Madam Clerk, if you call the roll. Councilor Cummings? Yes. Deputy Mayor Herlock? Yes. Councilor Price Abrams? Yes. Councilor Russo? Yes. Councilor Schlager? Yes. Councilor Yacobellis? I believe you stepped, you stepped down. For a minute. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, Mayor Spiller? Yes. Uh, next, and I have one, thank Mr. You, Mr. Deputy Mayor, Mayor to, to your point. I appreciate uh, that. Thank you. Uh, I know speaking with individuals separately, we had moved uh, probably a month, two months ago now a culture and climate assessment. Uh, we left it open-ended for time for people to look at any entities that could potentially do that. I've not heard others come back with a piece. Um, certainly, we had one that was put forward to us that seemed to fit the bill. So at this time, I so move that we bring in culture up to do that culture and climate survey, and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any questions, concerns, or comments? Seeing. So this is the, they're Please. going to monitor our current uh, environment, right? That's, they're, they're coming to monitor our current environment. Yeah, the resolution we already passed was yeah, that somebody come in, yeah, yeah, to do a, a culture and climate assessment, make sure reporting structures are in place, make sure um, there's opportunities and, and it's laid out so that employees all know what that process is, et cetera, et cetera, so we don't run yeah, into, it, well, I, you get the point as to why we don't run into. Right, um, but I, I want to be very clear out of one, my respect for the deputy manager and my friendship with him for a long time, that this is not based on your period of since you've been in charge, but the previous administration that you were deputy manager and not in the role you're in now. So I think it's clear that I just want to make sure that that's said, that this doesn't reflect on your leadership, but it will determine whether or not your leadership is, is good. So yes, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, concerns, comments? Seeing none, Madam Clerk? Councilor Cummings? No. Deputy Mayor Herlock? Yes. Councilor Price Abrams? Yes. Councilor Russo? Abstain. Councilor Schlager? Yes. Councilor Yacobellis? Yes. Mayor Spiller? Yes. Um, with that, uh, yeah, okay. I think we've completed our items. Um, I will uh, and, and to my colleagues, you know what, at the next meeting, if no objection to you guys, for, for the vast number of things like we saw that moved, I'm going to move more, you know, I read each one, read each one, but if I see that there's whatever, I'll ask if anybody would like to pull one out, um, and you can certainly do so, but I will move more in block and that we all have them, we all read them in advance, and uh, there's a piece there. I, I, as much as I appreciate reading every R, blah, 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 but, you know, I think you guys get it. Okay. Second, I'll second that, Mr. Yes, Mayor. <laughs> I, well, I didn't want to do it in mid, you know, mid whatever, but halfway through, I'm like, why am I reading each one, you know? Um, okay, that said, I will turn it over to comments. Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Acting Manager, I'll go to you. Uh, even though it's late, I'm sorry. Uh, just a We're still moving to fill positions. Uh, our Director of Human Resources will begin on January 3rd. 
There was interviews today for the activities coordinator for the Recreation uh, and Cultural Affairs Department, and tomorrow there are three interviews scheduled for the Health uh, Department Director's position, which is the second interview. I'm sorry, the what position? Health the Director of Health. Uh, Mr. Cabot, can you just repeat all those a little slower one more time? Just to hear okay. those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, our Director of Human Resources will begin January 3rd, okay. 2023. Mm -hmm. um, we interviewed today for the Activities Coordinator in the Department of Recreation and Cultural Affairs. Tomorrow, there will be three second interviews for the Director of the Health Department. By the end of the day, hopefully, we'll have a candidate for that. Regarding utilities, the water department uh, today lifted the Borough Water Advisory, and these were the two water main breaks associated with both Bloomfield Avenue and Upper Mountain. Um, so the water is good. They came back from the lab, and there were no issues. Um, regarding uh, the parking utility and, and MPD, uh, we're scheduling a meeting to discuss the transference of responsibilities of overnight parking enforcement from the MPD to the parking utility. Um, the, I'm finding it very hard. I'm so sorry to hear. Is it? Is it my? I'm losing my well, voice I, I that little bit. In the mic either. I just don't hear you that well. Okay. What I was saying is that I'll be meeting with uh, Chief Conforti, uh, Deputy Chief Will Young, and Gary Abzani and Mr. Um, Germano to discuss the transference of overnight parking enforcement from the MPD to the parking utility. Um, we all thought it was a good idea, especially since the uptick in um, car thefts and property, private property encroachment during the course of the night. It will allow the MPD to do more policing. Okay, and the, the chief thought that that was a good idea and it's going to help them quite a bit. Um, Can you give us, so you'll have a budget and what that looks like and all those pieces, right? Oh, so yeah, we're going to kind of flesh it out to determine when it can be a turnkey to do this. I'd like okay. to see the, you know, license plate uh, recognition devices bought in-house and installed and all of that, get the infrastructure, for lack of better words, um, determined from Gary. And again, we haven't met collectively. I want to know personnel-wise if there's an impact on that, if he has to re-, re um, restructure his staff to a certain degree and just um, move staff around. That discussion is yet to take place, but that's going to be part of the discussion. How quickly can we do this? Whether it could be turnkey, whether we can, we need to, you know, transfer into it or meld into it. But the bottom line is uh, the chiefs both feel that they would be better off if they were able to police overnight as a, and have the parking enforcement done by the parking utility. And I thought it was a good idea, and we're going to continue this conversation. Hopefully, Friday, I think, is the scheduled date for that conversation. And, and um, I would just say let's get the budget around that and those other pieces, because I think as we all look at it, we know that the police, when they have time during the pieces overnight, you know, are looking at overnight parking when they're not called on anything else that may be right. going forward. Um, that said, you know, if we're dedicating significant resources, which I'm not saying you are, let's find out what this looks like, yeah. um, to put someone on overnight shifts on that. You know, if you remember years ago, the last count was, you know, people get away with it two-thirds of the time, about a third of the time, you get, you get nailed by the police overnight. But that said, um, you know, the, the, is it worth or, you know, you know, to bring in whatever for, for, for that, you know, to change that dynamic? I don't have an answer right. and, to and, work and, on that, but I'd like to see what that is because before we dedicate additional resources to that, you know, is there, are there other areas in the budget as we do this budget process that right. we'd rather those dollars go to right. than, you know, worrying about the X number of people who park overnight who get to take it a third of the time? And, and it, may, it may not be a dollar issue if, they, if um, the parking utility can stagger schedules or – Schedule. Yes, but, but let's hear about that about because that. I we're will gonna, say, that's gonna you be know, part of the and I know we see it on EDC when we have Wellmont and illegal parking, and you know, we want all hands on deck like during those peak hours because mm. that's like a ton of issues, right? And I know we've talked about specifically, you know, you know, target enforcement in terms of alerting people because we're hearing from tons of people around like a spike around blank, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'd hate to say, mm -hmm. I get it. We pull one off of that to make them do an overnight shift. I'd argue way more value and no, 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 right. you know, address the thing that 90% of the people mm -hmm. are getting hit with during daytime hours, not the, not the overnight. Right. Anyway, we could look at all of it, but just please consider all those pieces. And when we'll you come do. to us with the information, you know, these are the type of questions we're going to be asked. So I want to, at least for me, so I want to share okay. what, 
And Councilman Yucca-Bells on this one. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, yeah, Mrs. Canterbury, and I said, I said this at the last meeting too, and it's not news to you or anybody else. It is the Wild West on Bloomfield Avenue. Every day, all the time. I mean, I, I've called the police this week with cars double parking with their hazard lights on, blocking travel lanes, sometimes two at a time. It, it is just, it makes, it makes the improvements to Bloomfield Avenue worthless. It's unbelievable how the disregard for pulling over into the, you know, on the other side of the yellow line, into the, right, it's stopping in the, in the travel lane, all by Ascend, by all the other mm -hmm. businesses, you know, by the Walmart. So we, we really just need that more regularly patrolled. Okay. Um, maybe just an officer there on, you know, it's just stationed there on Fridays and Saturday nights in particular to move traffic through. Because I just think it reputationally affects all of us as Montclair, downtown Montclair is too crazy, we can't navigate it. No, I understand. Thanks. I understand. And, and I'll certainly note to that point, speaking with a few of the officers who are doing foot patrols, mm -hmm. and touche, right, to all of us, that we've got foot patrols going, and, and that's a good thing. Um, but every one of them is noted if they stand in the Bloomfield Avenue area, they mm -hmm. could just be doing that the whole time because that's what's going on. Um, so I agree with the, the councilman's point, and I think you know we can all judge and talk about, hey, listen, you know, there's there's all these decks like right there, you know, if you turn off. Mm -hmm. um, but then at some point, it is enforcement, right? We can't have uh, you know right. craziness around it, and and it does spill over in other conversations when people are like, look, there'll be additional traffic impact. Well, there's only this impact because we're not enforcing right. some of the laws, so we've got to address some of these pieces as well. Understood. Thank you. Um, and the last thing, um, the Ride for Life numbers have come in, and it looks like that for the Township of Montclair in 2022 <coughs> will exceed 23,000 rides. The Lyft and Uber. So I think that we can say that that's a very successful project in partnership with the County of Essex. That's, that's excellent. I did have a question. If I may. Yeah. Councilwoman Price Abrams. Um, yeah, going back again, the boil water advisory and that whole mess, I appreciate the people who, you know, did tremendous amount of work in a short order. I just was, I wanted to understand better, what is the notification to the people who are affected, just so I fully understand? I mean, I, I saw it on my Swift 911 on my phone, and there was an email separate, but I don't know if you didn't subscribe to that, how would one have been aware to boil water? <laughs> to my knowledge, it was on the website. It was on the SWIFT 911 and those directly affected the uh, water utility deliver hand delivered to each affected residence. Okay, I mean that's the kind of thing I appreciate that they yes they have to know. I, I would like to encourage not three of you in the room at the moment, but anybody listening <laughs> to this point, you know, to sign up for those alerts because there's very critical information that's conveyed that way. But I'm glad to know that that was not the only way people were right. left to know. All right, thank and you. Did I cover it all, Mr. Fan? And, and, and Facebook. <laughs> And, and to your point, uh, Councilwoman, um, as an additional note, in addition to the door-to-door -door notification, uh, another uh, you know shout out and thank you to our, our fire department and conversations there. Um, you know we were able to get water, uh, some of that water that we know we've had from the previous breakages, et cetera, from the from the sites that we've stored them to residents who were in need. So they went door-to-door -door also to say a business or a residence if you were in need of water. They were distributing water uh, to those residents yeah, as well, so they um, they had that as well. So that was another positive that was going on during that process. Thank you. Yep. Uh, That's all I had, ma'am. Okay, uh, Madam Clerk. I just wish you all a happy holiday season and happy new year. No report. Great. Thank you so much. Appreciate that, uh, Mr. Attorney. No report, but I will send the same well wishes and happy holidays to everybody. Yeah, uh, 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 Madam, uh, Madam Attorney. <laughs> thank you, Mayor. I want to thank the council very much. Um, it's an honor to be here. And um, I echo the sentiment, happy holidays. Happy holidays to all of you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that. Uh, let's start this side. Uh, Councilman Cummings. I have a lot to say, Bill. Just letting you know, man. Bring it. I'm ready. <laughs> it's already. No, I, I do want to wish a happy Hanukkah. And to those uh, rabbis who reached out, I'm sorry. I was not able to attend the lightings. I, I just could not get off work in time. But um, happy holidays, everybody. Wishing you all a healthy and happy and prosperous new year. Um, council members and your families, I hope everyone has a great time. And uh, we'll see each other again in 2023. Councilman Price Abrams. Well, that was very well said, and really the sentiments also that I wish to share. You know, we, we go through a lot together, but, you know, it's nice for us to take time to mark the, that we celebrate and we have 
Uh, I did have the opportunity to attend some of the candle lightings, missed other things, of course, along the way, but it's nice. And the spirit of Hanukkah is really about bringing light into the world, and that was noted at each turn. And, and as we increase the light, that's the way Hanukkah starts with one light and you go up to the full eight with the, with the one that's the helper. So, you know, we are all helpers to help bring the, that light. And, um, and I just uh, appreciate the spirit of that here. And, and of course, those who are celebrating Christmas and Kwanzaa and anything else uh, of the season, I wish um, a good and healthy new year to everybody as well. Thanks. Uh, Councilman Russo. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Frank Del Guardio, who represents the county, was here and he talked to me a bit about Joyce Goldman. Mm -hmm. He was going to hopefully say something, but he left. And I, I would like to just say we lost a very good friend of mine as well as a great active resident of Montclair because Joyce was the representative, as you know, of Council of County Executive Joe DiVincenzo and of the county for so many years sitting here representing the county. And she passed away last week and Joyce lived on uh, Roosevelt Place. She was active in town since the late, uh, the eighties actually. She was here when um, Winona Lipman was our first African-American state senator and she and Winona Lipman formed a group called the Montclair Reform Democrats. Mm -hmm. I met Joyce in 76 when we started to work for Jerry Brown for president. Then she worked on Peter Shapiro's first county executives campaign with me when I ran for freeholder. Joyce was a big help to me throughout. I just want to say to everyone that we've lost someone. She formed the first night. You know, we had our first night celebrations in Montclair. Joyce was the one who put those together in a volunteer capacity. Um, she was a delegate to the convention in 1992 with my brother for Jerry Brown for president. People don't know that, but Joyce was a delegate, very enthused for Governor Brown. And uh, we formed a group when she was living uh, in her condo complex, and I was at the Bel Air house up in uh, Valley Road. We formed a group called Montclair Can, Montclair Condominium Association Network, which still exists in some way, but she and I together got all the condo boards together to try to advocate for trash and refuse pickup by the town. Believe it or not, that didn't happen at that time. Then it was a legal decision by the state that the town had to be uh, available to pick up refuse from condominiums. But you used to have to get your own hauler. So as residents who also paid taxes, uh, between being either a homeowner or a tenant, there were condo owners. And Joyce Goldman formed the Condominium Association Network with me, Montclair Can. I just feel so badly about losing her. I know you all have the same experience with her. We lost a great resident of Montclair, so my heart goes out to her family and thanking Joyce Goldman for all the participation and help that she gave so many people. As a county, you know, what she did was work as the constituent complaint person for the county, and that was the same time I was the consumer complaint person for Essex County. So we both had a role in taking complaints so she imbued in me that whole idea of responding. And she always responded to people immediately for the county. And I always try to respond to constituents based on the lessons I learned from Joyce Goldman. So thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to say a sort of a eulogy to Joyce Goldman. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Yakubels. Uh, thanks, Mayor. I just echo what everybody's already said in terms of uh, special wishes for the holidays. Happy Hanukkah. Merry Christmas. Happy Kwanzaa and Happy New Year to everybody. It's been, I think, a very challenging year um, for us, for the township. A lot of good victories, though. I don't want us to lose sight of all the things we did this year in terms of passing rent control, achieving a AAA credit rating. Again, we became a monarch city. We just outlawed the sale of, of uh, puppy mill puppies and kittens. So we, uh, across the board, I think we're covering a lot of ground. And I think the accomplishments list is, is even deeper. And at the same time, I think we had a lot of pain points with some of the administration of construction projects in town, really not so much related um, to to us, but so related to the um, supply chain issues, related to the availability of contractors uh, with COVID um, and inflation costs. Uh, so I think we also have some lessons learned in terms of holding some of the contractors that we work with this year uh, to a higher standard and being more clear about deliverables around things like when they say they're going to complete a project like a pool uh, or the, the park around the pool or the pool won't be closed like they told us uh, that we learned to ask more pointed questions and get things like that 
in writing so that we can hold them more accountable so we don't find ourselves in these situations one after the next. So hopefully those mishaps are behind us and we have nothing but a brighter year ahead. So thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Councilwoman Schlager. Um, thank you, Mayor. I, um, I think yesterday um, and a good part of today, the bridge in Edgewood Park has been disassembled and, and taken down. Um, there are, um, I guess, orange, um, obst orange um, barriers. barriers so that you cannot mm -hmm. cross the bridge because there is some piping that is still there the, um, in that um, area. So I'm glad to see that happened finally, and that and that the work is being um, that the work is proceeding, and, and hopefully it'll the weather will cooperate. Although it's going to get really cold this weekend, so I hope that. Um, you know, it doesn't deter any of the work, but um, so I'm really happy about that. But it is going to be cold, do we? I was just curious if we had any warming stations set up. I know it is Christmas weekend, it's hard, but. Um, yeah, mesh you know. does that, mesh. Yeah, so it's, I'm, I'm hoping that everybody stays warm this weekend. It's going to be um, treacherous. But um, on that note, too, though, I wish everybody a very happy holiday. Merry Christmas, happy Hanukkah, and um, see you all in 2023, which is hard to believe. So, thank you. <laughs> Mr. Deputy Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll be real quick. A um, couple of things. I, I also want to echo my colleague's sentiments. Happy holidays to, to everyone and a happy and healthy new year to everybody. And hopefully next year is a lot better than the last one that we just passed. A lot of going, things going on here in Montclair. Salvation Army had their concert Friday night. I know many of us were there as well. Uh, the Women's Club of Upper Montclair had their holiday tea the other day. Unico Montclair had their holiday party. There's just a lot going on in town right now. And uh, Councilor Jacobellis, you had um, neglected to mention the 100 uh, perfect score that we received on the Equality Index this uh, year. So. Kudos to you and the work that you and your organization have done. Mr. Mayor, that's it for me for 2022. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. I appreciate that. And uh, I will also echo, I think, as you, you know, I'll pick up what you, where you left off in terms of, um, and Councilman, I think you noted this as well, you know, really proud of the many things we've accomplished in 2022, right? I think both um, at a, 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 a 30,000 foot level and, and certainly down to um, uh, an underground level. And what I mean by that is, you know, when we started this meeting talking about the infrastructure work that's done, it's something that's not often as talked about, but, you know, it costs us millions of dollars and we invest in it because it's important. Um, and, and we'll continue to do that as, as well on top of uh, doing a lot of the other things that we do to make sure uh, residents are being served. And I think my council colleagues noted uh, many of those things. And um, yes, it's it's always always a challenge and, and we always work to try and, uh, you know, get things done with bringing our own opinions and challenges. And uh, I, I always love uh, the push and pull of the of the work. That's what gets you a good product. So I think we're we're, we're on track there. Um, also, you know, certainly want to wish everyone a happy holidays. Um, I, I know that it's a time to spend with family, friends, and I certainly think as we still are in, and um, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, not not too bad a wave here, but coming out of a pandemic, but. Um, you know, I think it's, it's, a, it's an opportunity for us to really reflect on what's important and, and spending time with those uh, that we love and, and valuing that health uh, and, and happiness um, that, that the season hopefully gives us a chance to reflect on. Uh, all the events, and uh, Deputy Mayor, you noted them that we've all been going to, too. It's been wonderful to see all have such a community uh, benefit uh, component, whether it's gifts for kids or, you know, support for those in need in whatever way. Um, it, it's great to, to, to see that, and it's great to see so many of my, all of you at all of these different things. So I appreciate that. And I'll just simply say, uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor, and I know you, you uh, have a lot of excitement for when I was uh, – uh, reaching up and lighting the manure earlier uh, at, at the new, you know, 12 foot elevation they've raised it this year for the one at uh, um, at well at the Wellmont. Um, you know, there was a moment there of the, the deputy mayor, maybe the new mayor at the, uh, you know, depending on how that went down. But um, besides that, it, uh, you know, it, oh, it was it was it was definitely shaky, to say the least, in terms of what was going on. <laughs> Um, but but it's a time for us to be uh, a little lighthearted and enjoy uh, the the enjoy the great company and and uh, know that uh, we've got a great community here and uh, a great group of people and, and we all have them in our circles as well uh, personally. So a uh, happy holidays to all. We appreciate it. And for 2022, I entertain a motion to adjourn. It's moved and seconded. All in favor, Second. please say aye. Aye. All opposed. We are adjourned. Thank you very much, everybody.